live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Good morning, welcome to South Carolina. Welcome to Bassmaster Live on a special day, in fact, a special week that's not about bass, but another hard fighting sport fish, much appreciated sport fish, especially in this part of the world, the redfish. Let's take a look at our Yamaha rules of the game. 10 two person teams have been out there for two full days. This is the day, the third day, championship Sunday. Four redfish per day is the limit, unlike the last two years. Four redfish per team, you have to catch your own two, and a very different slot limit, much smaller at 17 to 23 inches. A big challenge, but a place that's got a great population of redfish. And Davey Height, the great Davey Height with us here in his home state of South Carolina. And there you see our playing field, about 100 miles of it, Davey. It is a great playing field. A southern border there, just a little north of Charleston Harbor. And like you said, Tommy, about 100 miles. You go up north, almost to Myrtle Beach, around Conway area there. But most of the anglers not really going to those limit borders there. They're staying within about 20 miles of the takeoff there in Georgetown, South Carolina. Lots of good fishing close by. All right, well, we were uh, having our takeoff about an hour ago. They're out there setting up to fish right now, but we got some thoughts from these anglers before the launch. Put the foot on the gas pedal. That's the plan for today. The plan for today is, is we're gonna we're going to head back to the same area where we caught them. I looked at a few other areas that's around that zone that looks similar. And we're going to just chunk and wind. Yeah, put our head down, get to fishing. Man, we just need a little bit of luck. We'll get some bites today. We just need them to be 22, you know, plus inch fish. That's right. It's, um, you know, the final day. We got a shot at it, so uh, we got to catch. We got to catch more than we've been catching, but we do have a shot at it. Still, we haven't blanked. So, hopefully today we can go out and catch a limit of slot fish. Well, a limit of 22 and a half inches. That would be the goal. Um, but you know, it's tough fishing, so we're just gonna have to go out and fish hard as we can. Hopefully, we'll bring four redfish in for everybody to see. Yesterday was pretty good. We got three keepers, two real good ones, had 11 and a half pounds. We're right in the middle of the pack, but uh, it's been pretty volatile fishing as far as, you know, some of the teams ahead of us, they might not bring in a fish. You know, the leaders the first day brought in one fish yesterday. So if by some crazy chance we get four of those big ones like we caught yesterday, and we, I mean, we could bring in 18, 19 pounds and you just, you just They're never, there. yeah. Just got to get them to bite. Yep. So we're gonna, we got a long run. We kind of got a two prong strategy. We'll start in the grass um, where we haven't caught any keepers yet, but we've caught a lot of fish really close on the upper end and the lower end. And we've seen some of those, the right size ones. So we'll start there. And then when, when Ben thinks the tide's right or a little earlier, we're gonna go over to our area where we caught the three yesterday. And that's probably where we'll be the rest of the day. It all comes down to today. We gotta catch them. Um, good spot. We're in a good spot. One pound lead. Um, I think we got a good shot. We just gotta catch the fish. We're gonna. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to wait on the water a little bit, and I think that's gonna be a little nerve wracking, especially knowing where we're at. Um, but I think as long as we fish calm, patient. We're gonna catch some fish. And like the last two days, you know, if we get a little bit of luck and we get some of those fish that fit, you know, this, this could be a really good day for us. A um, Couple guys, you know, that are a pound behind us, they had a really good day today, or yesterday, not today, they had a really good day yesterday. So, um, you know, it's anyone's game, but we're not, gonna, uh, we're not gonna bow down today, that's for sure. We're gonna give it everything we got. Our leaders right there to start this final day of competition, Cody Chivas and Fred Myers from the Gulf Coast of Florida here. Most of our anglers from different parts of the country, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and so forth. Only one really team that could said to be at least partway local, but they've all had their challenges adapting to a really different environment. Plenty of fish here, that is for sure, but following the tide, making your catch windows make sure you're there for them and also navigating Davy Hyde has been a problem. Yeah, it really has. You have about a six foot tide swing and most of these anglers are certainly not accustomed to that. We saw a few anglers get stuck the first day of the tournament. It's so hard to learn this hundred miles of the South Carolina coastline. The tide changes every day. Today they're faced with higher water early in the day than they've seen so far. 
but they're figuring it out. And we saw more fish caught yesterday than we did on day one. I think we'll see that again today, even more fish caught. The big key is trying to catch those fish in that slot between 17 and 23 inches. Yeah, the big thing, uh, Tommy and Davey, is that four fish maximum per team, three days of competition. So you have 12 possible fish that you could bring to the scales. Right now, our leaders have the most fish so far, six fish, four more possible today. That's the big deal is if you didn't get work done the past few days, you can't really make up too much ground unless people slip in front of you. Those leaders are hoping they don't slip. They have a pound lead, four possible fish today as well. Yeah, those leaders have had the only thing that really resembles <laughs> a, 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 a clean a clean card this week. They've not had one of those days where everything went down. <coughs> Everyone else has had to suffer through a very, very trying day. They just got to keep it on track for one more day, which is easier said than done. They got that pound and one ounce lead over Land and Reeves, who uh, came in with zero one of these days. And our day one leaders had to struggle yesterday. Dwayne Eshte and uh, Drew Cook had a big time troubles getting uh, keepers in the boat in the slot yesterday. So we are looking very much forward to the next hour and a half here in our split coverage here on FS1. We'll bring you an hour and a half from here in South Carolina or there in South Carolina. Uh, to start the day, we'll be back for the last hour and a half of the day on FS1 as well. Welcome here to this place, the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore as always and two, two time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year and plus classic champion Davey Hyde plus South Carolina guy. <laughs> what do you think about what we've seen so far? Well, I just think it's going to be very exciting today. The slot really adds a lot to this event. There's no doubt about it. You see anglers catch a lot of fish. Day one leaders only had that one fish yesterday in the slot, but I, I, I really see these anglers getting better and better on this body of water. Only one local in this event, and, and he's really a, outside the boundaries. He fishes the Charleston Harbor area more, but really looking forward to today. I think we'll see even more fish caught. The big thing is trying to catch those on the upper end of the slot, those 22 to 23 inch fish. If right. you've been joining us all year long, you've been seeing bass fishing action with our top level pros and how they've gotten there from all over the country. Well, this week, our 10 teams split amongst all star groups of elite series pros with redfish guides and other pros. And then the qualifiers, the teams that made it here, the dual redfish anglers, they are some of the best anglers in the world who have qualified from some of the best redfish trails in the country. Like you said, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, all represented South Carolina as well. Our elite series pros, they say, hey, bass fishermen, they're at to pick up other species very quickly. We've seen them hold their weight and carry their own in the redfish game this week. But the field this week, as skilled as we've ever seen for a 10-team field. Yeah, lots of good stuff to follow today. We're going to start, start it out with a team that's had the most good stuff happen to them through the course of this tournament so far. That's going to be Cody Chivas and Fred Myers. Fred from Panama City, Cody Chivas from Indian Shores, Florida. Well, we haven't caught a redfish yet, but that was kind of to be expected. Our bite started about 45 minutes later yesterday than the day before, and it's probably going to be about another 30, 40 minutes later today. So uh, we're just kind of starting in the same spot we did the last two days. And really, if we can get a fish or two off, off this island, we've been working just the same old song here, pop and cork in this broken marsh. Um, on this high water, it'll make us feel really good for this afternoon, you know, when that water drops out a little bit. But beautiful day, another beautiful day in South Carolina, and we, uh, we got a good shot to win this thing. So we're going to fish as hard as we can in this area and see what happens. I, I, know, uh, I know Fred's ready to catch one here, so <laughs> he yeah, might not say much. I don't want to be in the same position as yesterday. Of course, I don't want neither one of us be in the position we were yesterday. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll stand on the bow if you get two real quick here. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't mind it, but oh, I'm sorry. You good? But uh, there's definitely fish that we can win with here. So that's the main thing is to put ourselves in position and be in an area. And the bottom line is, is we have high water spot here and a low water spot that's close. So. Uh, we feel good about it. As soon as we see the tide start changing and getting right, we can slip over and try to get on our low water fish pretty quick. And uh, if we just get a, a high water bite like we did yesterday, it just makes it that much easier to try to start making decisions. But no matter how it ha happens, I, I feel like we're in the right position doing the right thing and would not change anything. Um, it, it's uh, the fish are here to do what we need to do. We may not do it, but um, 
there's a couple of boats um, around the area and I think the fish are doing the same thing. So I don't know that they have any real advantage over us because the fish are pretty much doing the same thing in this area. So capitalizing on the opportunities is the biggest thing right now. And um, we're gonna try to make the best of it and just happy to be in the position we are on the final day. Looking for four. What Fred was talking about, what he had to endure yesterday was with that part of the rules. It says you have to catch your own two fish. Cody caught his fairly early on, and they just spent a long time for Fred to get his, but they, they got it done. Yeah, they did, and it does add an ex extra challenge to this event, not only the slot, but each angler has to catch their two fish, and the way it worked out yesterday, Fred was, let's say, on the hot seat at the bow of the boat <laughs> trying to catch his fish, and, and man, a lot of pressure on him there, but he did that, and, uh, Gosh, it's just so tough. He, he probably caught 12 fish before he caught two in those slot, and it, it made it really, really tough on him, but glad to see him get it done. When we even go back to day one, Friday of this event, we saw the first few pictures here at Winya Bay. Teams up in that grass, way up in the flooded cover, but this duo, Myers and Chivas, have been off the edge of the grass. They were the ones who started fast, had a good one in the boat. Like you said, Fred getting unlucky, catching too big a fish or too small a fish, need to be in that zone. But this team has gone through quite a few fish. Doing It looks very similar to where everyone else is fishing, but just a different strategy. And we've seen them use popping corks to success yeah. and regular soft plastic baits without the popping cork. So I'm confident no matter what situation is given to them, they've got a good game plan. They just have to run the tide at the correct times, right place, right time, and it'll work out. The only thing that's really jumped out to me, they have used popping corks more than any of these other For teams. Sure. We've seen a lot of the other teams use them at times, but they started out using Using them and use them probably two thirds of the time we've seen them on camera along with the swim bait. Throwing a saltwater assassin elite shiner swim bait, 316 belly hook. You watch all these fish coming in through the first two days here in these highlights and you think, wow, how can they only have a 10 pound a day average going on right now? Well, it's all about that slot right there. Of course, if they didn't have the upper limit to that, we'd have we'd have uh, 20 pounds a day, 25 oh, pounds least. a day easily. Absolutely. Yeah. Get over to uh, very close to the takeoff in Georgetown. One of our hybrid teams, Lead Series Pro Scott Canterbury, teamed up with uh, Florida Redfish Guide Krista Miller. Pitching a creature looking bait. Looks a lot like he's fishing a bass tournament right there. Net. Oh, you got him. Maybe too big. Probably too big. Right, right here. Maybe not. No, no he'll bear. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, that one I measured. All right. Let's, oh, shh. Let's not spook the rest of them. Easy, baby. Easy, baby. That one I measured. Yeah, We're on the board. He'll measure easy. All right. We're on the board, boys. Next time, do we do it? We're going to have to be That's going to measure. 20. He's going to be close, so he may be too big. Yeah, right there, lost your head. I don't want to spook them. No, we got little spooky pants. Good look here at the measuring board, and that fish has to be between the 17 and 23 inch slot limit. Here, I got it. They've got a perfect pinch tool. It's a little square bracket. You see it in his right hand there. He just handed it to Krista. You put it around the base of the tail, push it to 22 and a half if it's close. You ain't got to worry about it. 22 inches. Okay. You gotta get the live well, well, the the zone right there for yeah. Canterbury. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you only yeah. use that perfect pinch tool if that fish is gonna be yeah, real close, close. So you wanna see the exact measurement so there's no there. no denying the length of that fish. But. And the perfect pinch is a consistent way to pinch the tail. In bass events, we don't pinch tails, we fan the tail to see if it makes the line to gain. But pinching it too severe can make that fish way longer than it needs to be or way shorter. The perfect pinch consistent for all these teams. Miller and Canterbury there, uh, starting it today in sixth place, but uh, they are one of the select teams who have had a keeper every day. That hasn't been true of everyone else, and now they are on the board today, moving up into fifth place, and we are just getting started. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by TH Marine and by Yamaha. 
our once a year opportunity to follow some of the best redfish anglers in the world. Here at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. We're in South Carolina the, this, this time around. Of course, we were in the Texas Gulf Coast for the last two years, and it's a, a different landscape around here and a lot of different problems for these guys to figure out. It's not a kick in to catch a limit, but boy, if you can catch a limit, you will have done something very special today. One team on the board early today, Kristen Miller and Scott Canterbury, the good one, going in just a few minutes ago. Keep in mind the high tide they're dealing with this morning. It's certainly good to get a fish in the boat that early for Scott Canterbury. All those tidal situations that opened windows yesterday are going to happen. One hour later today, 54 minutes to be exact. That's the way tide schedules work. So yeah, you're going to have to adjust accordingly and hope they stay with it. Team with the biggest bag of the tournament yesterday, 16-6 for them, jumping land and Reeves in the second. We're, uh, we're just up in this grass, kind of pitching this tall grass. These fish want to be up in this grass early in the morning. Just like we did yesterday, we're going to try to find a few pushing here and there, see if we can't pick some up early. We're not far from our main stretch of bank, but the water's got to start coming out of here for those fish to get on those banks where we're catching them. So we're just going to cruise through here, try to pick up a few singles here and there. And uh, if we get lucky doing that, that'll be awesome. That'll be a bonus. But uh, I'm, I don't expect a good bite till around 10 o'clock. So. Hopefully we can get it done in here and move out to our A spot. And then it's going to be game on. I saw a little bass fishing bait this morning. It's a Guggen Baits Bandito Bug Jr. Um, we were doing this yesterday in this flood of grass. We threw shrimp, we threw paddle tails, everything we could at them. This is the only thing I'd get them to bite. <clears throat> so I don't know if it's mimicking a little, little crawfish or a you know, crab or whatever they're feeding on in here whenever this, this water gets high in the grass, but uh, a little bass fishing bait. Never leave home without them. Well, this team, they talk about their A spot that they're going to a little bit later when they hit that yesterday around 11 o'clock local time. Uh, it was three good ones in short order. It really was, and they're fishing. Once the water starts to fall out and, and get away from that vegetation, they're fishing outside, and you see that here. And yesterday, it was really incredible. They put back-to-back -back keepers, like 22-inch redfish, in the boat, hooked up at the same time. It was really good. And, and then they started moving around. Once they had their four fish, they started moving around and really didn't pressure that area a whole lot. I think we'll see them pressure it very hard today, and hopefully they have the same success here or yesterday, them doubling up. Travis Land in the foreground there is from Seguin, Texas. He fished the first year of the uh, Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup. It's partners, real. Jeremy Reeves. Yeah. Yep, and, and real interesting to watch these anglers from different parts of the country. A lot of our anglers that are qualified are from the Texas, Louisiana area, Florida also. But they really sight fish more than I thought. Even on high tides, low tides, it doesn't matter. This morning you see them back in that vegetation and they're not casting, they're just looking around for a fish moving or tailing, even at high tides or low tides. Well, just about perfect weather is what's allowed them to do it. <laughs> that much sight fishing as they've yeah. had this time. We're back in Texas, the wind blowing all the time. Made it a spotty, a spotty thing. And this duo doesn't normally fish together. Landon Reeves, they're part of the Elite Redfish Solo Series, so they both qualified and are now, instead of opponents and competitors, they're teammates working together. That's why we see a little bit of happy high five and a little bit of rebuking at times, and it's, <laughs> hey boy, let me get the troll motor. <laughs> back to our leaders, Myers and Chivas. Good fish, Fred. Good fish. Take your time. Yes! Yes! Well, that's going to be Ooh, right there, there really close. Hopefully, just a little under 23 inches. He's gonna be close. He's 
gonna be crazy. Take it He's gonna be crazy. As much as you want easy keepers this week, you want them to be close. Yeah. The closer they are to 23, Ooh. the better weight you're gonna have for your four fish. There we go. A lot, a lot less wiggle room with four compared to having a five fish limit or having two fish. The impact is large. And just picking up with us, the rules in this tournament have a, involve a slot of 17 to 23 inches. They have to fit inside that slot. You want the largest fish. Moment of truth. Get that's 23 or under. Oh, oh wow. That's going to be a... Boom! You're pinching him. Grab that pincher. This fish is so close, they are going to use that tool you were referring to, Ronnie. But I think it's going to be 22 and 3 quarter. Oh, boy. Oof. Go to go to the half inch mark. Yep, Fred knows the rules of the game. Looks like wow. that's as perfect good. as it gets. Got to go to half inch. Oh, yeah. All day. 16 that shot. What? Boom! Is the perfect fish. Fish. Boom! Fish. Get that baby in that well. And you notice that. It was almost too long when you had it pushed to 21 and a half because that tail was more. The more you get to that 22 and a half, which is the mark you're supposed to slide it to, that tail point oh bent my. over. That's a four and a half pounder. Kept it in, in balance. We needed that one. We needed that one. I can't tell you how many fish this pair has caught that was that much over oh, yeah. the amount it was below. They would do. Most of them were Fred. <laughs> we nice say the pair, it was there. mostly Fred getting the wrong <laughs> end of the Yeah, make sure I hear that wheel. Or just swap with me and I'll get it. All right. Cody Shiva striking first again, just like oh, yesterday. That's a good fish. See how they deal with, you know, you yesterday they were really handicapped with I Cody not being We've able to, or chose not days, to fish for several hours. If if Fred will take the front days. of the boat now with Cody having that first fish already. And having a team with one and one each it early. Be a little fatter, yeah. but that would be huge. And it's so hard to do. It's the final day, the, you know, championship day to as close to Cody, hold back and not fish the front of the boat. Yeah. But I think it would be the smart thing under okay. these. He's not rules close that we have to make us worry. Um, How far in there were Right you? there. Okay. Right there. Usually, when you catch a fish like that right off the bat, it takes the jitters out of you. But <laughs> I think I just got a lot more nervous. Our defending champions from last year in Port Aransas, Texas. Uh, We're at the spot. Sean yeah, O'Connor. Yeah, we just Louisiana. got here a little bit ago. Water's still coming in. A um, little dirtier than what it was yesterday, but I think as we get the sun coming up, we'll be able to see. We've got a little company. Um, we've got some kayakers over on the other side where we were fishing, where we saw quite a few fish. So hopefully they get in and get out of there pretty quick and it settles back down. We can get over there and still see some of those fish. Um, you know, just got to give it some time and see what develops out here. Still looks right, so just got to fish it slow and hope that they show up. Not overly happy, but this is kind of close to another boat launch, so not much we can do about having other people Surprise. in the hole. Probably that's the first time we've seen a kind of Yeah, it is the first time. Surprise, though. Surprise they ain't here all the time. We're going to get them. Today's going to be a clean day of fishing. Might be relocating. <laughs> We're gonna get them. Huh? We're gonna get them. Not much fish sign yet. Hopefully, see some tails, some pushes. Come on. Over there? Nah, it could have been. It's either a push or a mullet. Kind of burned up on top. Looking real mullety. This, this team uh, had most success yesterday under the high tide conditions early yes. in this same general area. 
and you said it, Tommy, 54 minutes different for the tide each day, roughly. They get here, it's high tide on day one, and it's falling. They get here yesterday, it's still coming in to high tide, and today they've got basically an hour of time to fish as it's still rising before it gets to slack high and starts to fall back out. So kind of adjust your timetable, and yeah. if you're catching them at a certain time, it's gonna be a little delayed today. We'll take a look at that. Bad news for the rest of the field. Our leaders on board with a really, really good first keeper of the day. Extends their lead. 25 pounds and 6 ounces unofficially right now. Miller and Canterbury so far the only other team on the board. But it is early yet here in South Carolina. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on Fox, the World Series shifts to Arizona for game three as Adonis Garcia and the Rangers take on Corbin Carroll and the D-backs. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. All knotted up. All knotted up, one and one. Joys of autumn, October. Spectacle that is the World Series. Can't wait for that. Boy, we got a spectacle going on out here. A beautiful place to stage the third ever Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, sponsored by Skeeter Boats. Ten teams out there. All shooting for the $75,000 first prize. We've really had a good distribution. We've had about two go really far south, two go really far north, and about four to six that are right in the middle of our playing field, not, you know, one way or another too drastic. This is one of the spots where we've caught all oversized fish the last two days, but close. I mean, 20, 23 and a half, 24, 25. Fred caught a fish right here yesterday that was eight and a quarter. You know, that was 26 inches. So that's the first slot fish we've got in this little stretch. Oh, I got another one. I told you getting the net out early was good. Oh, he's got me in something right here. He's got me in something right here. I'm out. I'm out. You're out. I'm still in it. Okay. Another obstacle. Yeah. You have to deal with the high tide. Those fish are up in that grass. Get I'm out. out of there. Can be Another good fish. No doubt. Another good fish. Oh my, boy. Wow. is he going to fit? I'm going to... one just a perfect fish in that slot it's gonna be real close I think they would like, like it to be twin. about a, they'd like it to be about a quarter inch even shorter just to just just for security and safety <laughs> measures Woo! yes 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 Woo! let's go that fish is 22 inches that's no a stud. What's he watch? Four pounder, maybe. I can't see the sun. Maybe a little shy. Four and a quarter. Oh boy. Four and a quarter. Fred, I'm hooked right here. Four and a half and a four and a quarter to start your final day. The fastest we've seen anybody in the two fish as well. Yeah. Here's what we talked about, though. Fred gets the rest of the day by himself. <laughs> there he goes. I don't think Shivitz has it in him to uh, not fish the front of the boat if he has a rod in his hand. Any better than that. We have not seen it yet. We I mean, that. you can't argue you with their success, but boy, yeah. it, it really handicaps them now for Fred. Uh, Ah. Catch the next two. I do think with this tide being different, it's still, this is a different tide cycle on that than they one. got the first one was four and a half. That they, Cody could 
could continue to fish? Because these are all bonus no. extra fish. They're not having to lean on other things. Oh, I think he absolutely yet. should fish. For sure. That but he should fish in the back of the bus. Stuff. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you could tell, but I mean, I was stuck. I mean, that was, I don't know what he had me in. I almost for a second was thinking there was a pipe or something there. Hey, Cody, where'd you catch that fish? I did not see Right here in this little corner, real close. I'd say fish this stuff slow, and we'll just try to. I'm shaking like a leaf. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. You really couldn't. You could ask for me to catch one. Well, <laughs> that's gonna happen, buddy. All right, so the next two fish we gotta mark before we put yep. them in there. Yep. Here we go, you see that fish? Had him, he said maybe a pipe well, there or something. It's right probably now, just vegetation. That, there ain't no benefit for you up in that stuff. Right no, no. <laughs> A lot of these yeah, anglers yeah. using the spinning rods, it's none you know, longer cast, obviously, but not as, not, you're not as much power and leverage to be able to get the fish, fish out of that vegetation. 20, 30 pound test braid to about a 20, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader is what most of them are using. It's championship Sunday and we just started off with like two champions. touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> we started off with two touchdowns. And you gotta think, everywhere we go, every time we talk about grass, it's just grass. But these, you know, stems of grass probably have barnacles, other oysters, other things that can cut your line. So you wanna torque them out of there and get it out, but you don't wanna, you gotta check your line every single fish or every single cast that you present it right up in there. A couple of our Gulf Coast of Florida anglers said this grass is nothing like the grass back at home. Very, very different for them. Good fish there, that's what you're looking for, no doubt. I asked one of the local guides there around the Georgetown area, a lot of experience, a lot of experience about, because you have the, the oysters, the barnacles, that sort of thing, using heavier fluorocarbon leader, and, and he said they really seem to shy away from, if you get above about 30 pound yep. test with the fluorocarbon, these fish, you know, why not go to 40 or 50 pound test? Yeah, you would get them through that stuff a little better, but you don't get as many bites. Well, <clears throat> go ahead, Justin. <clears throat> uh, we, you know, got here our first area, got a bite really quick, caught one, had another bite, not sure if it was a red or not, but, you know, the water's really high. We haven't had much luck with it being high, so to get a bite this early is pretty encouraging. Um, you know, the tide's just getting later and later every day, and obviously when it starts falling is when we like it best, but maybe we're onto a little something to get a bonus bite or two this morning with it high and uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna see. It's <clears throat> definitely encouraging though to go ahead and get get some bites this morning. That's something that hasn't happened yet all week, practice or tournament days. We're around some good fish though. I mean we have some really quality fish around us. It's just making the best of our opportunities. I'm not sure how many bites we'll get today but we definitely have the right fish around us. Certainly what you want to do is just be around the right size fish and when he refers to the right size fish, they can't be too big, they can't be too small. It's certainly challenging this week, looking for the right size. Typically the right size is the biggest fish you can possibly <coughs> find. But Dude, I swear. Look at I that skeeter like boat's bird's eye view. That, that lays the story out for you right there. Their story was zero fish on day number one. They yep. caught two good ones yesterday, 10 pounds. And they, uh, yep, and they've switched up a lot. You see there, they're on a, a steeper bank with those shells, uh, a hard edge, a hard line. Um, the first day they were yes, back sir. in yes, that sir. marsh yes, sir. Yes, looking sir. for those fish tailing, but they've certainly changed it up. Got them, got them. Much more productive day two we were talking right. about right here with hold on, hold on, two that average on five hold pounds. Hold on. Rickard, our 2021 champion here, and then getting second last year. He is one of our dual angler. We talk about the Elite Series pros and a, and a great redfish angler combined together. He has had great success in this event the first two years of its installment. He would love to have a great final day today. Mm -hmm. 
They have been blessed with three beautiful days of weather. Light, light winds. Just a little bit more southerly today, otherwise just no change all three days. I was hoping to kind of look up over there and see a tail poke up. <laughs> I'll stick my nose right there. Oh, yeah. It's amazing they can get back in that and I still know. get out. I know. It's crazy how far these suckers travel on these super, super huge tidal flows. Move hundreds of yards. Multiple times a day. Rickard referring to the tidal change every six hours. About a five or yep. six foot uh, change in water level. Most two highs these, and two lows each day. Most of these teams are used to a foot, maybe a foot and a half over a 12 hour window. We've got four or five feet over a six hour window. Yeah. It really has made a difference in uh, day number one. What they learned on day number one, they used to effect. They're, they're figuring out as they go along, of course, figuring out everything better than everyone else. This team, Cody Shivas and Fred Myers. Cody Shivas has his two keepers on board, and they are two good ones as well. And that's their lead extended to about 10 pounds, just under 10 pounds. Good, good start for that team. We'll be right back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by Power Pole and by Skeeter Boats. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Weathers Craig Herrera and this is the Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship forecast. Weather out on Winya Bay, South Carolina today. Oh, gorgeous sunshine. Temperatures into the low 80s after starting the morning at about 60 degrees or so. Good luck to everyone out there. Remember, you can download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Thank you, Craig Herrera and everyone at Fox Weather. This is the easy part of their job, just repeating that great forecast we've had all three days. Craig's got his hands full in the crew with the weather out uh, from the Texas Panhandle up to Denver with the yes. winter, winter storm advisories. Uh, snow and ice possibly in Denver today. About to check my fantasy team. I think I got Patrick Mahomes in a game where there's supposed to be four foot of snow. I don't <laughs> know if I want to start him. I, got, I don't have many options, Tommy. No, no. It's that time of year. Team of Rickard and Atkins right there again from our. We're going to make a move right now for the team of Gary Marino, Tony Viator. Team from the Houston area. Been a rough week for them. Just had trouble getting fish in that slot. We can't undersell how good they are as a team, though. Moreno, this oh, is the yeah. second time he's qualified to be in this event. He had a different partner. I believe it was Bo Favre a few years ago. <laughs> What's to talk about? Uh, how has our week been? Frustratingly brutal. Uh, we got over here on Saturday night. Poked around Sunday, just kind of uh, not fishing or anything, but just driving around, getting a feel for how everything goes, and all that went well. Monday morning. We put in, and a little blue wing tail. We put in. We had already kind of eliminated or narrowed down the spots we wanted to go look at, where we thought we could find fish. First spot we stopped, we didn't find fish. Second spot we did. Third spot we did. Fourth spot we did. Not giant concentrations of fish, but we found enough fish to feel comfortable. Looked at different water on Tuesday. Found even more fish. Found some really good concentrations of fish. And went back on Wednesday with the mindset of let's just go kind of tweak it out a little bit and to where we know exactly what we're going to do on day one. And we thought we had a pretty good game plan. And like all game plans, they're great until they get until you get that first punch in the mouth. 
And we have, we have fished water that we found fish in. We have fished water that we had never fished before. And it's all kind of come up the same. The few areas where we located fish, we didn't find, or located fish during practice, we didn't really find a lot of fish. I think our biggest uh, problem was the, we fished the first three days on incoming tides for the most part. And then on first day of tournament, it was all outgoing all day, or at least for the majority of the day. And I think the fish we found just aren't right for that particular tide. So we caught unders, we caught one really good, what we thought was a really good fish yesterday, but it was a little over. <coughs> Turns out that's just the way it is with fishing on that part. And so today we decided to heck with it. We had some places that we had wanted to look at during practice way down here near Charleston, and we didn't come look at them because we were finding fish up north, a lot closer to the dock. Obviously, the closer to the dock you are, the less, more, less time you run, more time you fish. That didn't work out, so we're down here at Charleston today punting. Hopefully, we can put something together here. Thought we were gonna be golden for a second there. We stopped at the mouth of this little creek and these flats are flooded up here on the either side of it. And there was four fish working within 50, 100 yards of us as soon as we stopped. And we, didn't, we managed to not catch any of the four. And I don't understand that. We didn't even, we got a bait in front of two of them and never even got a reaction out of them. So I guess at this point, we're still punting. And it'll work out the way it works out. I know at this point, the worst that I can do is place last, because that's where I am right now. And I'm really just well, Tony Vyth, we're laying out a not so rosy scenario today. We hope for those guys to, to get onto some fish, though. You don't want hey, anybody to blame. That's the deal in fishing, though. No matter what species you're targeting, the, the changing variables and conditions on the water, it's different than a gym with a controlled environment and the hoop stays the same, the ball stays. This is moving goalposts all week long, and I'm not talking about goalposts the Kansas Jayhawks moved around yesterday, but. No, wait a minute. The other moving goalposts. <laughs> You know, we're like day yeah. one leaders, Dwayne yeah. Ishtay, yeah. Drew Cook. The reason why is because uh, at low tide, we might better get close to that hard bank. I don't know if we're going to be here for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're here on day three. We, uh, we where we finished yesterday. We uh, actually each day we we finished here. Hunter and, and each day we caught, we caught three keepers. Yeah, we caught three keepers here. So we came back here. It's high water. We we're able to get up on the shoreline here. And uh, while we're waiting on the water to go down, where well, we can get in our spot where we. Well, we're playing on going, so tide's getting later each day, so we're having to uh, buy more time, or, or should I say, fish some different stuff until, whereas day one, we went straight there yeah. and was able to get in early. So we're having to, uh, I, I guess, just reverse the role, basically, yeah. of what we did on day one. Because we're not going to be able to get in into that pond until about 11 o'clock, it looks like. So, yeah. So, and we're going to have to get out of there at a, about one uh, something. Yeah, one. Yeah. We've caught some fish this morning, just haven't had the fortune of any of uh, measuring some fat fish, Drew. I mean, yeah, they're well built. Yeah, they're well built. I really think if we can catch a keeper here, I think we're going to have a stud. <laughs> I mean. It, it, it's some chunks. I mean, some 20, 24, 25 inch fish that's fat, fat, fat. I mean, they're definitely eating good here. 
No doubt for about sure. That. I think they're eating some of the Cajun food. I yeah. think they look like they're eating grease and gravy. Mm -hmm. You know, with some little, with some rice on it or something. I don't know. They look healthy. They definitely. Got it. Let's take a look at the. The history of the first two days for this team had a great day number one. That is the place where they got most of the work done. Yeah, day one, they got into this little, let's say, pond area. There's a little small entrance with a, a bridge that they had to, they tried to go start there and couldn't get in because the water was a little too high. But on day one, the water was falling just right after they, they left from takeoff. So they didn't have to wait long. They went in this area and caught three slot fish perfect in that one area and then left that area and, and caught some fish later in the day. But this yeah. this has really yeah, been the, you know, the key for their success. Yeah. Yesterday, they spent a lot of time in there, did not catch anything. So it was really tough. They finished each day here uh, outside of that pond area in this one particular place. A lot of fish there. In, in the first day, they both caught a couple of fish there. Yesterday afternoon, Drew Cook, you see there, that's the fish that they, the only fish that they mm -hmm. caught within the slot yesterday afternoon. With just a little time left, this morning they choose to start there. And you just think, man, there's so many fish there at low tide, all we got to do is go up in the vegetation and we'll be able to catch them in high tide. Not so easy. Not so easy. No, it's been proven that way. What a difference between day one and day two, two for that team right there. But they are still in it, currently hanging in there in third place. They got to, quite a mountain to climb, though, as Myers and Chivas have a, put a good, good half a limit in the boat with the Chivas catching two for about nine pounds, almost nine pounds. So big, big job ahead of them. And for the rest of our anglers today on Day 3 Championship Sunday. Later today, it's a huge day of football on Fox as Matthew Stafford and the Rams take on Dak Prescott and the Cowboys or the Browns battle the Seahawks or other regional action. Check for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Oh, Ronnie, Texans and the Panthers. How about your Panthers? How are they doing this year? Oh, they're not my Panthers. Oh, I'm oh, a I thought you fan. were from North Carolina. I, no, I, I was, I, I was raised rider. in, no, I was raised in North Carolina, <laughs> but I became a Cardinals fan before they got Kurt Warner, and then they had Super Bowl success, and now we're in looking for the number one pick success, you know? Yeah, they, yeah. I've yeah, seen it all. For, that's, I'm still here standing. I got bullet holes in me everywhere, oh, but it's you all are, good. You are depleting our national <laughs> supply of excuses very quickly. <laughs> Get down to the team of Mullet and Mullet. Jeff and Ken Mullet. Get up here, just a little Sarasota bit. Sarasota Bradenton area. Bank up here. Yeah. Well, that's for bad yesterday. Hey. Well, day three out right here. Uh, this high water has really got us uh, baffled because our tail and fish areas just have not paid off. Um, it's like the fish just aren't tailing. The water's so high, I think you can't even see them tailing. I think they're there. They're just so high. So we're here in the ICW just trying to pick up a fish or two and wait for that water to fall out like it did yesterday. Once it gets to about a 4.5, we're going to be able to possibly uh, go back in and catch our fish. Um, it's pretty much all we have, so we're just going to go out here this morning and do the best we can, cover water, make as many casts as we can, and you know, try to catch some fish. Um, I said it's been a struggle in this high water. We never had this high water pre-fishing, and um, it was just—it's just tough to put something together. You know, in three days. Uh, some guys have obviously, but this will definitely get a lot better once the tide drops out. <clears throat> like I said, to about a 4.5. So I think we can catch four fish today. We caught quite a few yesterday. A couple, just like I said, a little bit over, um, but. We're optimistic to put four together and, you know, hopefully pull out maybe a top five out of this thing, make the best of it. What do you think, Jeff? There's actually a hard shell bank here that you cannot see because the tide's up so far. So that's our that's our reasoning for fishing this edge is that. But when you look out over there, it's just as far as you can see. So it's going to start falling here in a couple minutes. So that should help us out. They should push out here pretty quickly. But that's our, that's our reasoning for fishing this edge is a lot of times those fish just hang out somewhere close. They don't go as far as you think they would. And um, so that's why, that's why we're doing what we're doing this morning because normally they're going to be just falling out on that edge and doing their thing. So 
be really, really nice to pick one up about right now. Yeah, it'd definitely be, a, like I said, a bonus fish. You know, something <clears throat> we really need. We haven't had an early morning bite all three days. It's been all afternoon. So I think yesterday we caught our first fish at what, 11 o'clock, 10.30, yeah. 11 o'clock. I think everyone's on break, but uh, like I said, a lot tougher than we thought it was gonna be, not what we expected at all. But Pretty we're still optimistic that we can get this thing done. We know a couple of the areas we were fishing where we caught the ones that were just a little over yesterday, uh, those were some extremely fat fish. And so we know that we're in the right areas to get this done today. And we had that flurry back to back where we caught our two keepers yesterday. So we know that both of those areas we have in the afternoon have potential to get it done in a hurry, quickly. A couple schools in both of those areas. So yeah, gonna keep sucking it up, keep making casts till our arms fall off and get her done, so. Ken and Jeff Mullet uh, talking about getting it done today. They'll have to have a four fish limit if they have any hopes of getting it done today, especially when view of what our leaders have done. They're halfway to that four fish limit already. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you want to be catching fish all day long, but we saw laying in reefs yesterday. There's a tight window where some of these anglers really count on catching their fish, and you can certainly do that in short order. All right, the guy getting it done for us all week on site there in Georgetown, historic Georgetown, South Carolina, is this man right here, Dave Mercer. And Dave, a beautiful day, three in a row there. You couldn't ask for better weather. What do you got for us this morning? What are you looking at? Well, it is a, it's beautiful. I mean, this is, this is why everybody travels from all around the world to enjoy South Carolina. And Georgetown has given us picture perfect weather for all three days of this competition. But uh, here's breaking news. For the first time since this tournament started, actually all 10 teams left on time. We saw day number one, uh, Scott Canterbury and Krista Miller, they kind of got delayed because they had an airlock in their steering cable, but that got fixed up. And then yesterday, Pat Schlopper's partner slept in a little bit, so he was about an hour and a half late. But today, good news, we're three days into this, and they all showed up on time. But uh, the one thing that stands out to me, guys, is redfish tournaments are incredibly inconsistent. When you talk to the anglers at takeoff this morning, their remarks, they kind of show you that because I mean generally in the final day of an elite series event they're pretty dialed in they know exactly how they're going to fish them but there is so many variables in these redfish tournaments you guys have talked about it all week but of course the tide and I mean heck if it's not the tide if it's not getting stuck a dolphin might just roll in and eat what you're trying to catch so there's so many variables but I also think that's why you're seeing it get better. That's why we had that big day yesterday, because if you look at how the conditions were during pre-fish for this tournament, it was literally the exact opposite of what we're seeing here, tide levels wise. So they, the first day that they actually fished in that tide was day number one of the tournament. It was the most inconsistent. They started to figure it out yesterday, and I'm predicting big things by the end of today. So Dave, it's great that everyone was there and was able to get started on on time this morning, but but do you see, and kind of what you were referring to, do you see just the mental attitude of these anglers better because they're learning the water a lot better, not only the tides, you know, but but just learning the 100 miles of stretch that they've, they've got to fish here on the South Carolina coastline? Yeah, and, and, and like I said, the number one, it doesn't matter. The, it's not like in tournaments that we're used to, bass tournaments where you're like, you need that area. That area can be the best area for 100 miles for a 45 minute window and absolutely suck for the rest of the day. So I think they're starting to put it together, but I think they have a, just a different vibe where they realize this kind of tournament fishing, you're not totally in control. I mean, you have to, they, they don't have enough experience on this body of water to be like, I need to be here, here, and here at these particular times like we see in the past. But definitely they're gaining confidence. I mean, most of the teams are gaining confidence. There's a few of them that I'll be honest, they. They're pretty shattered right now, but uh, <laughs> this this has been a great tournament. And, and we talked about it on stage. The weird thing is when people look at the leaderboard at the end of a day, if you haven't turned into tuned into this event, you think, whoa, it is a tough fishery. Well, yesterday, I listened to live all day, whether I was on it or off it, but it, 
it literally wasn't five minutes where you wouldn't see somebody hooked up. When they start biting, I mean, they are munching in bunches and uh, this fishery is a great place to come fishing. A frustrating place to fish a tournament because of the slot, but an incredible place to come fishing. Thank you so much, Dave Mercer. Be running the way in at the end of the day, the final, the final reckoning here. We look forward to that. Great to have Dave uh, on the ground. Uh, on site there in Georgetown, historic Georgetown, South Carolina. They'll be there at the Francis Marion Park for the way in today. So, a lot to look forward to. That's coming up at Bassmaster.com at 3.15. Scott Canterbury, one of our elite anglers. They've got one in the boat. You know, it's early. Uh, we've been getting a few bites. We actually caught a keeper pretty early this morning, which is a good thing. We've got some bites, but I don't know about if the tide's getting bad or not. It seems like it slowed down a little bit. Uh, we're sort of working it a little different. Uh, Pat Slapper even put me, told me about a little deal he was doing, and I, I saw I've caught a couple, but uh, it's, uh, you know, we just need three more keepers. It's been good. Uh, it's been fun. We're fixing to make a run. We're going to run some new water today, try to find some cleaner water maybe and uh, hopefully get around some big ones when the tide goes out we got a few areas that I think we can get a bite or two this evening it's just uh, catching those keepers is gonna be the key we need to catch three more and we'll make a run at this hopefully get Scott to tell us a little bit about the little deal that Pat yeah, Slotter told him about. That. We, we want to hear more about that. Well, you've been saying all morning you want to see what he's using yeah. there. You want to see what the deal is. Two days, so we might have a classic not, here. You know, it's, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's day you can't tell anybody anything I have to fish else. here in 2026. Yeah. I, you know, I can't, <laughs> can't spill it. It is day three. Come on, he can speak. We might have to ask Pat Schlapper because you know if Davey tells me a secret, it would be wrong for me to tell the world the secret. Davey's Davey yeah. should tell that secret. Yeah, should never tell a secondhand secret. <laughs> Unless John Garrett says he's going to win it, Open's Angler of the Year, and then you get to tell the world when he almost does it that he did that he said he called it. Still in the first quarter of our competition here, a full eight days, eight hours today for these anglers on Championship Sunday. Leaders, Chivas and Myers, as it stands right now, we've got plenty more on the way. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Third annual Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship here. And for the first time ever in South Carolina, we have moved all the way to the Atlantic coast from Texas. I think that was part of the plan to get these major competitors from a major redfish series across the country, the circuits, to uh, see how they deal with something uh, a little bit more challenging, something that they have not been quite as accustomed to, and some have done better than others. Best of all, this team right here in the foreground, the team from the Florida Gulf Coast, Cody Shibis and Fred Myers. Yeah, they're netting them right now. Uh, nice. That's comforting. Well, what, what it's really doing is probably making Dwayne and them go, oh my God, they got four now. Because <laughs> they're, they're right behind us and they can hear every yell, but they can't tell who's yelling. Should we say, it's not us, Dwayne? No. Yeah. <laughs> Make them, yeah, yeah keep, keep them nervous. A lot of bait right here. Yeah, it looks good. See how, see how much cleaner it is on this edge? Mm -hmm. I mean, look, you can just see all the minnows. You can see all the minnows right here just swimming down this clean edge. Right here, we've been getting bit a little, little Yeah, we've, we've caught a couple of fish right here. Mm -hmm. But it's really clean. Yeah, I was picked up a wheelless bait and I was just kind of skipping up in the middle of this island, but there's so many broken sticks, you know, you can't really fish it, but we're, me and Fred were just talking. You can see a real definitive line about a foot off this marsh right here that gets cleaner. Where this boat is right here, the water's dirty, but it's green right here, and there's just a ton of little minnows, and every once in a while we're pushing a shrimp. So you can see why those fish are kind of running down this edge. Um, we got a, a weekend angler out here and 
on this point we've been catching a few fish on and they pulled in right before we caught our two fish. Oh, Fred's on. It's a slot. Oh, it is, it's gonna be close. That might, that might fit. He's, he's gonna be close. He's gonna be close. Close to the lower limit. I got the net. It appears. Okay. Might be 17 inches though. These little fish are hard to hold. Hey, we could see the first Cohen team. Yeah. Of four legal fish. If he does have a small one, gets a second. And 16 then they... and three quarters. Mm. Oh. Gonna make 16 and three quarters. I'm gonna put the pincher on him just to check. But there's no way that fish is gonna make it to 17 inches. He's about an eighth of an inch short, maybe a quarter of an inch short. And you can see on these smaller fish, they get a really kind of square tail. As these fish get bigger, they'll get what I call a swallow in their tail up here. And a lot of times, you know, that'll hurt you when you get around the top of the slot. But this is a nice little marsh redfish. And I think if Fred would have caught him, you know, maybe Wednesday next week, jokingly, <laughs> but he's close to being in that slot. That's a good sign though. Reason Cody's able to provide How us all well the commentary to the measuring is that he's done his work. He's, he's put his two keepers, and, a half. and uh, now Fred has to get. Two I think any, you have to catch your own. Any pound or ounce is going to help us today. <laughs> They're ahead of schedule today, but oh. same dilemma as yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fred, I've never netted so many. Tiny? Tiny fish. But well, we got it. We can't take the chance of that fish flipping off and we he being use, 17. Yeah. We can use one of them white bait nets. Yeah. You get pilchards out of the wheel with. <laughs> yeah, but I, what I was saying, we got some local guys here and they cheered us on when we caught the two fish. So that was pretty cool. Kind of told Fred it felt like we were okay. in the Bassmaster Redfish Cup or something because we watched that stuff all the time with the bass guys getting chewed on by the locals, but it doesn't happen too much red fishing. Also, we're looking at uh, Aaron Salazar. So Aaron, it's ben our Human. first time on live today. You know, can you just update us about our morning so far? Uh, yeah, um, we started off hopefully with the intentions to go into the Atlantic. Well, that didn't happen because we had boat problems right off the gate. Um, boat paused on us for a little bit, so it was a uh, didn't give us uh, the the will to say, hey, I, we can make it through the Atlantic. So we're trying a different area that we had, we we caught fish pre-fishing. Um, all of this pretty much is pre-fishing for us at the moment because we have never fished these tides. When we started pre-fishing uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the tides were they were incoming all day, so. Um, had an incoming tide. Now we got outgoing tide, and today is even different than any other day because the outgoing tide has started. We're actually gonna. Have, we had an incoming today, going into outgoing, so definitely a little different. So we're trying some different areas where we caught fish up today. Trying to make it happen. Trying to put it together. Ben. So I got to throw this out there. They, okay. they, they're learning more about the fishery. They certainly are. But I got a picture last night from a friend of mine there in Georgetown, Mike Smalls, that actually was showing Salazar's dinner plate. They, they have found the locals that will feed them shrimp and oysters and all that <laughs> very, very well. They, they've done a good job in a week learning where to eat. They just need to find where the fish eat a little more. <laughs> yeah, but that's right. They've done a good job. A lot of friendly folks down there in that part of South Carolina. We get these Louisiana, Texas Gulf people talking about how good the food is here. They must have some great food here because I'm Yes. Yeah. Certainly yes. known for that. What a terrific place. Unique part of South Carolina. Wild and beautiful and a beautiful situation right now for Fred Myers and Cody Chivas. Almost a 10 pound lead over the rest of this field, but we know how quickly it can happen. We know how quickly team like Landon Reeves and Ashton Cook can put four fish in the boat and make it very, very close. 
We're not going to get far away from them, that is for sure, and we will be right back. Back at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, this is Championship Sunday. Final day, and we're down to the last few minutes of our split coverage, our morning here on FS1. We will have an afternoon coverage coming up later today for the last hour and a half of this fishing day. TH Marine Weather Watch, man, that is uh, boring, and boring is great when you're talking about the TH Marine Weather Watch. It has been perfect, perfect weather. Right now, 63 degrees and sunny. We'll get up there bumping in the high 70s, maybe 80s today. Humidity's well. Ooh. On the coast, so it's going to be pretty good humidity, and the winds have been absolutely perfect, five miles an hour or less. They've had this. They've had the same weather report for three straight days, just like we have here in Little Rock. Except ours has been 65 degrees, right. 100 percent of rain all day long, <laughs> and 300 percent humidity at times. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> And about to turn cold, as a matter of fact. Yeah, hoodie weather is full on in South Carolina this morning, and now it'll be here in Little Rock soon. Fred Myers, his job, catch two Still keepers. His partner out. already done it. It's going to happen, though. Um, it is going to happen. Caught a few shorts, got two good ones in the well, and um, coming up on a good little stretch right here. Fred is focused, and we're in our best little section right here. <clears throat> it's a matter of time before we get another good fish, I think. I mean, you know, a day like today, every minute that goes by, you're thinking about, you know, the uh, magnitude of what we're fishing for today. Um, and you're just trying to focus on what you can control and we can't be doing anything better than what we're doing. I mean, we've stuck to this game plan all week. We're gonna live or die on this hill for better or worse. And um, I think we've covered every inch of grass, every single inch of grass on this island we can, but we're gonna just keep doing laps around it. I mean, these fish are gonna pull up and pull out and um, you know, we're gonna have a little flurry at the at the start of this outgoing, and then we're gonna have another little flurry at the bottom of this outgoing. So um, those two fish we got were bonus for sure. And not only that, they're really good fish. Yeah. Um, probably about, a, about as good as you can get commonly for a 23 inch slot fish. Again, See, the most some... consistent team so far over the first two days of competition and keeping it going here on Championship Sunday. And Cody Chivas, the man, first off, just like yesterday. Yeah, just like yesterday. But really, at day one, too, they were the team that we were really paying a lot of attention to, catching a lot of fish. It still amazes me, and I, I'm sure it does for them, that they only had two fish on day one within that slot because they have caught a lot of fish. A lot of these other teams that we've seen really seem to excel at a certain tide, about a 45 minute window, but, but not these two. They have done a good job catching numbers of fish throughout the day, even during the high tide. And boy, they uh, two fish away from being very, very tough to beat. Like we heard Fred just say, the two fish that they do have in the slot are both above 22 inches, but less than 23. That's perfect size fish. Yeah, just, just under nine pounds unofficially for them. That is a good first two fish right there. Of course, there's a lot of fishing time left in this day. A lot of time for one of these groups to, one of these pairs to get onto a good group of redfish and knock out four keepers in short order. So they are they don't have a hand on the trophy yet. They're, they're, they're close to the point where they can reach out and, and brush it. <laughs> They also know, I mean, we've talked to so many teams this week that have, man, we see a group of fish pushing. We see a group of fish pushing. Sometimes they're oversized, sometimes they're undersized. But if you get a group of fish pushing where you can see their tails, you can see them, especially when it's calm this afternoon, and they'll be able to really see a long ways, you get the right sized four fish, you could go from zero to a limit very quickly, like Travis Land and Jeremy Reeves did yesterday, Jeremy Reeves did yesterday, to have the biggest bag of the tournament. So we could see that today as well this afternoon. Yeah, and, and to that point, a lot of these anglers, you can tell us what they do. They look for those fish pushing, they look for those tails. We see a lot of these teams with neither one of those anglers fishing, but always at least one of these guys fishing all day long. 
Well, our FS1, as we say, our coverage is about to end. This live coverage right now for the morning session continues on Bassmaster.com. Of course, back at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon, back on FS1 to show you the final hour and a half of fishing, and we will see you then. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Bassmaster Live continues live coverage, not of bass fishing, but at red fishing at the world's highest level, absolutely right here. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Maybe you've been with us on FS1 earlier. We're going to take you for the next uh, several hours right here on Bassmaster.com. That's the way it stands right now. The team from uh, the Florida Gulf Coast, Fred Myers and Cody Chivas. Started the day with the lead, a good lead, well, a pound lead, not a real good lead, but they have stretched that out to almost 10 pounds right now by virtue of putting two good keepers in the boat early on in the first couple of hours of fishing. We've pushed into the third hour right now. And uh, that's our Skeeter bird's eye view of our leaders in action right now. And they've got a, We've caught a, five, game, pl a game plan that they've stuck to and one that they can obviously execute as well. They know how to catch them. They really do. And they've these, done these a good job are, catching fish throughout the day, not just at one certain sure. part of the tide. We just got to hope they don't pull up where those fish wanted to sit. I should be starting out about now, I would think, too. Isn't that right, Ryan? Yeah, so me and Fred were just kind of talking a little strategy here, here before we went live. There's definitely more weekend traffic and a couple of the spots that we want to fish when those tides lower. So we're just kind of trying to run through at what time are we going to bail on this to go to our low water spot. We might, you know, sacrifice a little fishing time here to ensure that we're in the right spot when the water gets low and kind of kind of get in position, but we're just adding up how many slot fish we've caught off this particular island the last two days, you know, three days here. And, and you know, the majority of them have come off this island. So we're going to probably do a couple more laps here and hopefully have a little luck with you know, no one being in our spot when this tide gets low. But that's the, that's a lot of the little stress things you run through your head when you're fishing these tournaments. And I know Fred's just laser focused right now on one thing and it's gonna happen for him, I think, here. It says high tide was about 8:30 in the Myrtle Beach region, north of our uh, north side of our playing field, about nine o'clock for the Charleston Coming region of our playing field. Stretch, so we 10, expect a bite 10, right 15 up here. for Georgetown. So it's dropping Tides out in places now. as it's still rising up in the Fish rivers. Fish ought to be coming to this little particular little point. To be honest with you, not to be overconfident, but it's been pretty predictable. Um, as long as you're on those key points or areas, if you will, when the tide gets right, you, you get bit. It might not be the right one, but you get bit. So that's what we're trying to do. There, there's a couple of dead places. Um, yeah, this, this is a good kind of ambush point. There's some current coming on this point here. And the current sweeps out around the point. And there's a little pocket here with some of that bro broken grass. So these redfish will kind of, they don't want to be in a ton of current. They like it, but they don't want to be on that point right now where it's really ripping right there. So this little pocket has been a good little stretch for us. The first day in particular, we caught a couple, couple fish right here. This team, the reigning redfish world champion World Series champions, recently crowned. Got a good bit of momentum, you could say, coming into this event. It's very cool to see the crossover. Guys like Fred Myers I talked to last year. And the interesting to be in the thing about this is we're fishing right here. Their goal is to qualify here. for this event. Our low water spot 
spots right across the way and we're watching weekend warriors that are you know out here enjoying this beautiful weather and uh they're all around our low water spot but the tide's just not right yet so it's a little nerve-wracking um i'm sure they're catching some fish but it's just not right for you know how we're gonna fish it and we can catch fish over here so it, we can't leave this but if you could understand just a little bit of what we're uh, seeing it's stressful you mentioned their goal being to qualify for this is yeah. this the biggest money event or that's just the no, exposure and the coverage yeah that we i think provide? it's the i think it's the platform i think that yeah. you know even if you've never fished for bass or don't have a desire to like I don't think Ben, like when Aaron Salazar and Ben Human were talking about the species that Aaron's traveled around and fished for, Ben said he's never never fished for bass purposefully, uh, but they still know the Bassmaster brand and recognize yeah, that's not it. And the fact that up there. this that's crossover great, allows yeah, this platform this is opportunity is oh a lot of exposure. That, yeah, knowing that it's also the only place where all these circuits probably come together to compete. Right. There's different you know championships right. among your series, but this is where all the champions kind of come to. Census folks tell us that more and more people in this country are migrating to the coastal areas Honestly, and so all, forth all like that. So uh, anglers in South Carolina have are... been so nice during these couple tournament days. You know, if they're fishing in an area we're fishing, they they've been real courteous and let us go around them, and um, that's great to see. Uh, that that and that a lot of times when there's a lot of fish in an area, people are in a better mood, and that's kind of I think what's going on. And these populations that are increasing in the coastal area came people who love love to fish and and yes. they get out to these places and they want to they want to go multi-species they want to go inshore i'm going to wait till offshore. probably about noon time but man we don't have any bojangles around me but uh that chicken biscuit will definitely give chick-fil-a a run for their money i'm looking forward to it i'm hopefully going to be eating it with Fred, we'll we'll have two really good fish, and we can sit down for a minute, we'll relax, and wait it. for this tie. We'll split it. That's the real plan. Fred doesn't eat much on the boat, but if if we get two good ones, I think I'll get him to eat that half. But he, he you saw right there, you're going to get hung up a lot in this marsh, and you don't want to pull too hard. He just popped it off because you don't want to pull that that bait too far away from that edge. And a lot of times you'll come off that broken marsh and before you even get to pop it, that fish will eat it. I've said it, I truly, Fred's a gamer. I, I think even if Fred gets his two fish and they have a limit, Fred's not gonna sit down to eat, he's gonna keep fishing. No, he wants to call now, he wants to he, win and he'll eat later. He is a gamer. He's steady, focused throughout the day. Same, same speed, same Head on gear. on a swivel all the time looking. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of gamers, a very important part of our studio game here at Bassmaster Live is Mike Sukon. He is actually there. He's not in the studio. There he was on day number one. We caught up with, I believe that's Mike Such Sukon there. Yep. Can't, can't verify that, but... Uh, He's looking good. That reported sighting on day number day one. Day one. Let's see how he's <laughs> progressed. Yeah, let's, yeah, oh, oh, he's up now his he's game. Now he's Wow. On a cooler. He's lost a little weight, too. A little fly let's fishing. See. Vertically challenged. You have to stand up on that cooler. <laughs> That's a platform. I don't know if that'd be legal if he was actually in the no, event. If no, he was in the elite, be. get him out of here if he was in the elite zone. But it's hard to fly fish sitting down, I must say. <laughs> looking at you, Such. for this type of fishery. I hope they don't get upset about me saying weekend warrior, but it's not like a bad term. I mean, in a way we're weak weekend warriors. We're out here on the weekend. You 
mentioned people moving to the coastlines. I certainly can see that Local, all yeah. along this area of well, South I Carolina. Bet you can. That's a better way to you say wish, it. You wish, know, I mean, you want to grow the sport, and <laughs> but then you get out there, where's all these people all over my <laughs> fishing hole? You know, That's, it's yep. give and take. We got to be careful what we say about Such. He's got a live feed out there while he's in the kayak. He just said that we were very funny. We need to watch ourselves. I said, hey, you're looking good out there, man. I mean, we didn't say nothing. Never better. Louis <laughs> Shivers, Fred Myers, our leaders. Pressing on here, looking for two more keepers. Four in the boat make them very, very hard to beat. Not surprising to see them down there on the southern edge of the boundaries, real close to where Ben Powers does most of his fishing. Hey Ben, how you feeling today so far? Relaxed? Well, when the camera wasn't rolling, I caught a 16 and 7 8 inch redfish. So that was a bit of a heartbreaker, but at least we know we're around them. Uh, we've stirred a few others up, and uh, we know they're in the area, so we're just going to keep fishing. But right now, we're at a slack high tide. So we need that water to start dropping, start receding, so that it gets the bait moving and gets the fish going again. But that should happen any minute here. So hopefully, we have some action for you guys here any second. And Powers, as you mentioned, David, the only bugs are bad, person huh, that resembles a, a local, local favorite here. Everyone else from Florida, right Louisiana, Texas. One of those groups that's struggled Great. mightily on so day one. No keepers, fish. plenty of fish caught, but just yeah, no boy. slot fish. But day two was a different story. Boy, day two was definitely different for them. Just I don't know what they did a whole lot different other than they were fortunate enough to catch some a little bit smaller. Pat Slopper caught some really nice fish just pitching up in that vegetation. Uh, on day one, but day two they got on the outside edge and you can see a little excitement there from Ben. They caught some that they were in that slot in a hurry too. They were one of those teams that in about 30 minutes certainly changed their whole tournament yesterday. Pat Schlopper, the Elite Series angler. Good season for him this year. This is his third year with the Elites. Uh, qualified for the Classic. Had a fourth place, uh, second event of the year at Lake Seminole. Yeah. Been real rock solid since making the Bass Nation Championship and winning that. He's qualified. He actually double qualified that year. He made it to the Opens that's and right. the Bass Nation. Forgot that. That's that's right. He caught. You guys will probably remember this. He caught a nine pounder two years ago at Santee Cooper in our elite event. Probably only about 50, 60 miles as the crow would fly <laughs> yeah. from where he's fishing right now. I think he caught a nine pounder on day one as well. It was just a 30 inch redfish that up in the <laughs> yeah. grass. Yeah, here he did. Certainly did. <laughs> Yeah, he was the big, he's the, been the big fish guy lately. Chickamauga, he had a giant. And uh, Santee Cooper that same year had a giant. Said he came into this hoping Ben can remember where everything is when the water come, <laughs> comes up. <laughs> you were talking about how Ben is the only local, the closest in proximity to this body of water as well. This duo is the closest and farthest from this body of water with That's a Schlapper. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Shopper from Aleva, Wisconsin. Not too far from La Crosse. Uh, Eau Claire. Very small. Oh. He's gonna be cool. 16 and a half. Been definitely the closest, but had a tough time getting there yesterday. It was right on that seam where it went from. A little bit of a line at Bojangles. Pinch that yeah. tail. Yeah. Well, well, that fish is a lot closer. I think I would take it out of the. That, that well, fish is probably going to make it. Exact same as that other one. Oh, 16 geez. and 7 eighths. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, like. It's like, it's like the same fish. I mean. I don't know. It ain't worth risking, I mean. Well, no, I mean, it's, hold on, let me just see. Uh, I'm gonna have to put a pound of, 
Cody Shivas made a good, explained it, but uh, on these shorter fish, when you pinch that tail, it doesn't have that length. It doesn't fold and, and give you extra length like you would want for the shorter fish. But when they get up there around that 23 mark, as you slide that, it always goes farther than you. I mean, just opposite yeah. of what you want, it makes it longer on those bigger fish. That, that tail on these smaller fish are squ uh, more square. Probably wasn't designed to be a devious slot limit, but that's the way it's working. Exactly. <laughs> I often wonder if you, if you change that slot, the, the big problem is it's such a narrow window there between 17 and 23. If it was 14 to 20, was. would you have the same dilemma? It's just because you have to hit that window or are we missing that class of fish yeah, in that window? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Because it should be that's the class of fish you have the most of if you could keep. Right. Yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here we go. Let me be a torque hooked up. This team's still looking for their first keeper. Might have it right here. Come in here. Come on. I think we do. Close. Looking good. But that's a fish. Go ahead. Grab the board. Bogus right here. Venture. Oh, here's the measure. He's only about 21. He's going to go for it. I'm 21. I'm going to go like 18. And definitely a slot. We can go home this afternoon knowing we got one fish on the board. Not a monster. Might make three pounds. Might not make three pounds. <laughs> uh, do we have water? In no, we have As nothing. As we say, the skunk's out of the boat. Took a while, but he's out. And and that tail was that tail wasn't uniform like all the other tails, with the top being the, the longest and the bottom being the longest. It was kind of a split up looking tail. Got so used to not catching fish, we didn't even fill the live well. <laughs> uh. Tony, the retired law enforcement officer from Winnie, Texas there, oh, striking, yeah. and who knows, these guys may go on and catch three more. They might have found the right place. We're gonna have to have him for our next event at Sabine go sit on the intercoastal and give us a readout of when people pass by. <laughs> We got plenty more on the way. Good to see that team on the board here, and we will be back with our leaders and more when we return. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by TH Marine and by Yamaha. Well into our third hour of fishing on Championship Sunday at this once a year event, the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. These are defending champs. Defending champs Adams and O'Connell from Mandeville and Metairie, Louisiana respectively. Had a rough start to their tournament, but certainly made up for it on day number two. And it looks like they're right in that area where they Caught a few fish yesterday around this same tide. Day one, they might have had zero at the weigh-in scales, Tommy, but we saw them go back to back right here with keepers. The well. And then someone pulled the plug on their bathtub and they lost yeah. some water in there and couldn't get past the sandbar. Had about yeah. seven pounds by, by estimate in the boat there, which is a shame. 
Did not get back to the weigh-in in time. Yesterday, a much better day for them. The number of fish they caught, but then they were also so able to take them to the scales, and, and they actually were put on the scoreboard for them. Yesterday, the thing that was really, really unusual in this tournament is they caught most of their fish in high water. You can see this fish here was later in the day when the water had fallen out and they had moved locations, but they caught three of their crucial fish yesterday in high tide. Almost 14 pounds total yesterday for them. Still looking at the first keeper today. Yeah, so we're still in the same area. The tide's really just now starting to move, uh, probably more so like it was yesterday morning. So again, we're off by an hour. Um, sun's getting at a better spot. We had this really kind of ugly, hazy yeah, Sean, muck over the top of the water. And uh, we're just, again, just trying to get to the point where these fish start moving and get active again. So it's like, you know, tidal dependent, like everybody knows. So hopefully they start moving, we start seeing them, and we can get a few in the boat. Got a lot more traffic this morning as far as just recreation, kayaker over there. Uh, we saw another big group of kayakers go out. I don't think they were fishermen, but definitely kind of puts a little more pressure on these fish. Again, slow fish it and hope a couple pop their heads out here because we don't have a whole lot more to go off of, unfortunately. So we're going to keep grinding. I hate to say keep grinding, but that's what it is. It's just a big grind out here. You just got to do it. If you think, Tommy, maybe seven, seven and a half pounds for that day one, if they make it back, they'll be at 21 and a half pounds. Yeah. They would be your day two yeah, leaders right. going to be right there. Trying yeah. to defend their championship. Instead, they're back, like they back by about six like pounds. Yeah. Everyone kind of, you know, incentivized to, right, to come back out or stay in the field. You know what I mean? I don't know how many guys. Ben. Ben. Yeah. First fish in the boat, thank God we got that monkey off her back. Now we can start putting some fish in the boat now. That's gonna keep, it's not gonna be, make sure it keeps, but that's gonna keep. Aaron Salazar, Ben Human, team from Corpus Christi there. That wrap, that picture on top of that dry storage right there keeps freaking me out. I'm like, they got over the limit in the boat already. <laughs> <laughs> These little fish are They're all slot to fish, too. Yeah. If our bigger fish, we can grab them, no problem. You see the slot right there if you're just joining us. 17 to 23. Two for the tournament. Yeah. Four and a four and a quarter. She like she hit that one kind of right at the boat. She did. Waited the last second to take it, and I'm glad he took it. Finally got the monkey off her back. Now we can get to have some fun now. As soon as I get the string off my foot. They were a team with some heartbreak <laughs> yesterday near the ramp. Ooh. Caught a good one and it just barely. Hair on uh, its yeah, the tail, tail, tail. Gulp, uh, just over. Obviously Gulp is one of our sponsors for sure. Um, paddle tails is something we normally use. Um, this water is different. We have to jig it off the bottom because the water levels just change constantly. So we're working it slow, slow rolling it. and. Um, that's been the ticket before pre-fishing. We were on some amazing fish all week. Um, again, coming to this, the change, the change of tides really got us good. But no, we're gonna make it happen though. Whew. I think that was yeah, a gulp shrimp. And several of the anglers have talked about using that here this week. Salazar and Human on the board for the day, as, as Ronnie mentioned, their second keeper of the tournament. That's good news for them. Back now to our day one leaders. 
really fantastic day one, the only team with a four fish limit on that day. Dwayne Eshte and Drew Cook. Sounds like one of them's hooked up. Drew Cook. Water still too high for them to get in the area where they caught the majority of the Drew fish they weighed on day one. Fish here. Twenty-two and three-quarter inch fish. Yeah, hey. Unfortunately, he just grew. <laughs> he was twenty-two and a quarter. Yeah, Twenty-nine. <laughs> Begging. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a good one. Oof. Good one as long as you're not in a redfish tournament. <laughs> I'll say that drone flying overhead live, it looked like there was a redfish coming straight for their boat with the with the shadow of the drone on the water. It looked like there was one that's going just beeline into them. Winyah Bay Redfish. There we go. No. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a West Miller drone. Dang it. See that shadow you're talking about? I had about, my suspicions. Talking about, right? <clears throat> yeah. Right. It looks, I, I was like, they're twice. Dwayne, they're over there. Right Look behind the you. Right side of your boat. <laughs> The 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 shark shark in the boat. He actually did. Oh, did he? Well, he bit it like right as I was about to to pop it. It's like the cork never went under. It was weird. I was kind of hoping it was. Well, we've caught little ones and big ones. In between ones. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about the DNR size limits. You would change them if you see a bunch of population, you know, in a certain size limit or another. I looked it up, and this year, Governor McMaster signed in the new law, which kept the same size limit at the time, which was 15 to 23 inches, but it reduced it from three per person to two per person. And then tournament director Hank Weldon said, I'll finish that up after the mullet cousins. It's Ken Mullet. Yeah. Excuse me, that's Jeff Mullet, sorry. They keep pulling out the edge of that stuff by uh, now. Small or over? What we got? Just nervous. Just nervous. No, he's good. No, he's real good. He's real good, I think. This is he too good. Is he too good? Come on, don't be big. Oh man. Yeah, he's a monster. Mm. But us. That's amazing. Close. He's 25 inches. Good job. I know you said that the other day and it was 23 and a quarter. <laughs> he was laying right up on that shallow hump, right? Right there? Yep, right in that stuff right there. Where's the measuring stick, dude? I mean, there's a couple hundred fish on this bank. I think there's like three or four schools. This is like, look at that tide starts dropping out. Should be able to catch them. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Wonder how big that fish is here, Jimmy. 24 or tw over. A little yeah. over. He's not even 24 inches. Yeah. Ah! So we just have, have <coughs> instead of 15 it. inch minimum, 17 to make so, it a little more challenging for these. No, so it was 15 to 23. And then they changed it to 17 to 23, and it recently went back to 15 to 23, but we had already locked it in and told the qualifying participants these were the regulations we're going by, so we stuck with the 17 to 23. But, okay, great. Yeah, maybe next time it'll be 17 to 25. 
Well, a near miss, and on to the next redfish then for the team of Ken and Jeff Mullet. The Gulf Coast, coast of Florida. That little limit in the boat. That's the imperative for everyone today. We'll be right back. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Getting ready to push into our fourth hour of fishing, eight hours of fishing on Championship Sunday. Today on this Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, our 10 teams out there. You can see them spread out on the Florida coast. The fantastic host city of Georgetown, South Carolina, historic city, deep water port. Coming all the way back into the 1700s in American history. Team Mullet just had an over, about a 24 incher just a few minutes ago. Oh, man. So, yeah, he hit pretty, he's thinking close or shallow. Oh, I just blew him out right there. Look at that. He was sitting right yeah. there. Yep. That was not a mullet. <clears throat> if there are a few hundred fish in this yeah, region, baby. they could yeah, really baby. make a move today yeah, baby. up the leaderboard. Hey, oh, fish. Another one behind, behind it. Behind this is a big too. fish. Uh, I don't know if I can get him out of his dress. Yeah, you can. It's, did you say it's a good fish? It's big. If we need to go after him, then we need to go after him. Come on. Get, get out. Us, get us. I can't do anything. I can't run the troll. <clears throat> he's still on there. I see his yeah, tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's in the back of that big clump. Keep it tight. I have to go to him. Just keep it tight. Oh, yeah. there he is, yeah. The harder you pull, the more. Now he's the more in the middle of the club. Now he's yes. in. Yeah. Mm. You have to go to him. They got to make like a mullet and get up there shallow. He's not that big. No. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh -oh. There we go. I got it. Good job. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. He keeps. He keeps. He keeps dude. Yep. All right. Take us. They're here. We're. Well, he's, he's got an oversized <clears throat> tail. <Yeah. laughs> it that's, does look awkward, yeah. doesn't it? Maybe it was the angle, but man, that's, that that's bad luck if he's an over. Got another one right there. I threw in, I seen him swirl. 18 inch with an oversized time. tail. When it goes him, over 23. Uh, yep. That wasn't the only one. We did see the last two years, Tommy, some interesting tails in Texas oh, where yeah. it's like this action. one's going to be it's got a super long tail or a real rounded yeah, real tail fork, and you expect fork it on yes. one side a lot you're like oh the body's 26 and the tail is 19. Got head on it too. It's just a I'm all in that pinch. That's stocky fish too. Where's the pincher at? I don't know. I'll see if you need well, it. Well we'll know here in a second. Oh are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at the tail on this. <laughs> now, let me catch another one real quick. No. All right. <laughs> Just try to figure out a way. South Carolina. No. Nope. Love those regs. Oh man. Go, buddy. They got to have to jump Mr. South. Freak Tail on the yeah. final day, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Freak Tail. But they got robbed. Yeah. Dang it. Oh well. All right. Hey, more action than we've seen them all week. So that's right. Yes. That's right. Oh, bad case. I got him. I got him. I got him. Like Adams O'Connell. I'm way too up front. Man, my big move. That was terrible. Oh, I got him. Got that. That's big. Mm -hmm. That was big. Is he? I don't know. Fish, though. I don't know where he went. Hey, can't move. Hopefully, he measures something. Close? He might be. He might be. Yeah, I think he's good. Look at that. Mm -hmm. In the nick of time, Edward Adams. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that tail looks like. Bait popped right out. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, that one looks like it might one. be on the yeah. upper he end also. Look, looks like a, a big one. Can we get it wet? <clears throat> wet right there. Yeah, I'll do it for you. Oop. Here, hand me the board, brother. It's pretty wet anyway. Gotcha. gotcha. 
time. I need to move that bag. He was up high, pretty. I think mm -hmm. he might make it. If he does, he's a stud. I know I wolfed that cat. Oh, I don't think mine was a whole lot better, but nah, it worked out. right direction. That would get the board nice. It's going to be right on it. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Come on, get us. Let us be lucky. These little motherfuckers. They definitely got plenty of energy. Why don't you get the well right now? Got a water well show? No, I don't have any water no more. I think you're going to be good. Shoot. Oh. Hold on. Mm, it's not looking good. Gotta put that little tool on there. Does he make it or no? Oh, this one's kind of. Big about a second. Eight, eight. Nope. He goes today. Hmm? He goes in today. You what? I said he goes in today. What? You know. Definitely over. Yeah, yeah, 23 and a half. Yeah, you can't keep it. You get pulled over and you get a ticket. Yeah? No, yeah, I got you. I thought it was closer than that. Not gonna do it. No. Nope. The defending champs, let's get back to our leaders, Fred Myers. Still looking for his first keeper. His partner's got two in the boat. Chartreuse cork disappears mm -hmm. all the way from Little Rock. <laughs> uh, wow, they're pulling against the current. Fifteen and a quarter. About a beautiful four box. Jeez. I looked up, I thought I was in one of those four boxes, Davey. <laughs> a compliment like that. Look at those weights as well. O'Connell Adams, basically two fish behind. Myers and Shivas. Same thing for land. Caught uh caught a couple shorts, which is no surprise. Um we're coming up on our best stretch where Cardi, uh, Cody caught those two good fish that we have in the well now. And we're hoping we uh, can catch one or two right there. And uh, it's getting, the tide's falling for sure. Um, but it's a good sign that we started, I started catching a few fish that don't measure. A couple, maybe close, I think we caught a 16 and three quarter, um, which doesn't count at all, but helps you uh, have confidence that the fish are coming to you still. And um, also we're hitting the tide at the, at the right point here where, where we think the fish are sitting. So we'd love to knock out another one right here in just a second. 
Yeah, we, when we were alive a second ago, there was a few more locals, and it's just such a nice day. It's going to be a difference for us today. Is we're going to have we're going to have some more traffic in this area. Um, so I feel really fortunate we got those two fish early. We're kind of been in a slow bite the last hour or so, but Fred's been picking off, you know, a short fish here and there. Um, haven't had as many really oversized fish like we have the last couple of days, so we'll see what happens here when this tide starts to drop a little bit. We got a we got a mark on this island. It's a stake. It's about a it was about six inches under the water when we went by it 10, 15 minutes ago, and we've kind of been using that to know when we need to get off this island and go the other side. So. When that stake's about six inches out of the water, it's time to go. So we got about another foot of tide to fall here. So really, if we can get another fish off this island, that'll be so clutch, I think, for the rest of the day. Um, settle us down a little bit, you know. We got two good fish, we're thankful for that, but we know what two more slot fish is gonna mean for us in, in this tournament. And. Uh, you know, water's starting to drop. We've heard about this all week. You know, we need that water to drop. We need that water to drop. Um, luckily, we've had a high tide bite, but now we're kind of getting to that point where we need the water to drop. We're just gonna keep pounding this stuff. You know, you might think like, man, these guys are just doing loops, loops on this island. There's no more fish left, but these fish are coming out of this, out of this marsh here. And, there might be a few that we haven't crossed paths with yet. And that was a good... And I was incorrect. O'Connell and Adams are still a four fish limit away from possibly yep. taking the lead. Eshte and Cook and Landon Reeves are within two fish of being yep. possibly in the lead. Oh, what a beautiful place. It's incredible. 100 miles of... South Carolina Atlantic coastline and all those wild inshore areas that are attached here that we're getting a good tour around during the course of this week. You know, local cormorant in action there. Yeah, that's a great. That's not the one you like. David wants to see. He didn't like that. He don't like that. It's so a much. jamunji bird. See, it is an incredible Belkin. place. Natural beauty abounds here in this part of the country, and we're so so happy that they are allowing us to have this tournament here. Ooh. There's a fisherman. That's a headache. That's a professional fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bald ah, eagle. Mighty bald eagle. We'll be back with more. Hopefully some redfish, too, when we return. <laughs> Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Back here on Championship Sunday, Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Championship state of South Carolina for the first time, third year of this tournament. In its existence, we've got 10 teams, as we always have here. Some of them contain a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro and a Redfish Pro. Our day one leaders was, were just such a team. By way of Louisiana, Texan Dwayne Eshte, Redfish Pro, and Drew Cook, who's won a big tournament here in the state of South Carolina last year. Also, top of century mark, Santee Cooper Lakes. I got him freaking coming. Got Go. One. I believe that one right there might that make the game. There. Live. Yeah. He's a keeper. I'm going to start getting the water ready, all right? All right. Well, he's been caught, too. Or maybe I had him hooked off funky. Pretty that one, they're on spots. Might make it. Oh, yeah. Those bass guys ain't used to these big reds here. <laughs> oh, yes, dude. I mean, a freaking perfect one, dude. Freaking perfect one. Let's yes. go. Mm. Well, I don't. 
Give him a little slap a this morning. Hundred anyway. pound champion. I mean, yeah. like he caught twenty that size. Yeah, <laughs> only about fifty miles from yeah. where you're at there, Dwayne. <laughs> and they don't have to be thirty inches to hit eight pounds for bass. No. We're all cool with showing love with redfish, but don't you bring the hate to the bass. That's I, right. We, will we got you outnumbered, by the way. Dwayne, we have tolerated you. No, I'm just kidding. For I like Dwayne. Long. I really I want to meet Dwayne. I've really enjoyed uh, watching him on the water this week. I mean that. He's been fun. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> he keeps it going. He keeps the conversation happening. Yep. Cody Shivas and his plan all along. We saw it all yesterday. Is once he gets his two, he is not going to fish anymore. He can fish to upgrade, but he's choosing not to. Need the way oh clear boy. for Fred, who is hooked up at this time. I think this one's an under. Hopefully, it's not an over. Well, that's good. Fish. Is it getting bigger? As it gets closer, they can they they can do that. Ah, We've seen that. Large. <sighs> oh, it's pretty long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Too yep. big. Hold them up for the camera over there. Oh, yeah. Beautiful South Carolina redfish, but not in the slot we're looking for. Beautiful fish. He might even be bigger than 27. Nope, 26. Not even 26, 25 and 7 eighths. Beautiful fish. Let's see what he weighs. Right at seven pounds, so that's pretty good weight for a fish that's 25 and 7 eighths. A lot of food for these fish. Hold up for camera behind us. Okay. Tommy, Ronnie, is there something wrong with me that halfway through that fight when I thought that was a keeper that I was thinking about that Bojangles biscuit? I'm thinking about it ever since they showed it us earlier in the week. That's just one of those things you can't control what size fish you catch, you know? But man, I thought for a second he looked good. I just must have saw his head. I saw him. I thought he was too big. Yeah, that wakey when he waked out of there. He rolls too. Yeah, that big wake. I think another one rolled out here to our right when I caught him. I'll be in North Carolina in about three weeks, Davey, and that is Bojangles. I heard, there. you know, I heard that my in-laws have a vacuum sealer, so I might just buy me five or six combos and just vacuum seal them up, bring them back here, and you know, like you do, you never know. Thing out of the grass. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me you were going to close the yeah, deal yeah. on Bojangles sponsorship, and you and Guy uh, Aker would have the yeah, same boat just wrap. Say, you just guide. call Guy to get to get a map to the nearest one. Guy and I, we know each other, but we're not like that, Davey. I wish we were, you know. <laughs> At least when I see him, if, he, if there's a biscuit tax, you know, like. <laughs> Some guy, you got me a biscuit this morning. God, Does he carry like, around like boxes of biscuits in that boat? Send them children here now. What? No matter how good they are, that's a long time between tournaments. Here. That might be a bad deal. Your kids, <laughs> your little cousin, not too little, but not too big. I do see Guy Acre probably every trip I make to North Carolina. I poke around some pros' house, shoot some content with them, and I always end up seeing him. He's always working. He's always out there. <laughs> yes. Tackle chop. You see him somewhere. God, yeah, it's like... They're just pulling up here. 
We've caught too many right here. Makes me feel good to catch an over though instead of just a bunch of rats. Yeah. Hey, when that drag goes, we know something's up. Yeah. When that drag starts moving, we get excited. Surprisingly, I fished a lot of areas. This grass is a little different. This jig head cork comes through it a lot better than say like Louisiana. There's similar grass in Louisiana. It's called Rosso cane. I don't know if this is the same. I don't think it is, but if you throw this cork up there next to that Rosso cane, it ain't coming out. And uh, you can, you kind of had to learn to fish since I've been here. You can get that cork in there five or six feet, even inside the grass. And I think that really helps get a bit of light every now and then. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's got to be from day two, right? We'll slow roll that Bojangles biscuit it's all not about day. It's not about slow the bragging roll. rights. It's not about 75,000. It's about the chicken biscuit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, he's going low carb this morning. No biscuit, just chicken. <laughs> hey, it's not a one-trick pony. I'll take their, their grilled you know, combo, their sausage biscuit, their... Cajun filet. I mean, there's you, you can really get. You really are working on that sponsorship, aren't you? You got yeah. the the four piece supreme, you know. And of course, I got to rep the cheer one when I go there. Cheer one was made in, in right beside my hometown growing up. So, Cherryville, North Carolina. No, no, it was <laughs> made in Salisbury. That's not where Salisbury steaks are made from, yeah. though. Speaking of North Carolina, that's where Texas Pete is made. Yes, got to get some. To bring back with early us. on in contraband, my Bassmaster career, rooming with Clark Winlet, and I said something about Texas Pete. He had no idea what I was talking about. I was like, "You're from Texas, and you don't know what Texas Pete is." <laughs> oh, and yeah. I look on the bottle, and it's made somewhere in North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. Here in here in Arkansas, you get Ozarka water, which comes from Texas. Does it really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have the Ozarks here in Arkansas. We always used to do the, growing up, you do the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you have to name something from your state that's each letter. Half of mine was food. I mean, it was Bojangles <laughs> oh, for B, Pepsi for P, and you got Speaking of that, I mean, C. you would think Bojangles would be from Louisiana, too, not North Carolina. I, I mean, how, when's the last time you saw a Bojangle in North Carolina? Was it a restaurant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did get one in Arkansas. It's about halfway to the Hogs game, so. Where's that? It's in Clarksville. Really? Yeah. Bojangles? I didn't know that. Right there near Lake Darnell. All right, back to fishing. <laughs> Making me hungry. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> we still got time for our midday break. We can get a you know, breed love to go get us some Cajun filet. Still got plenty of fishing time left on Championship Sunday right now, though. Myers Chivas, the team with the advantage, the big time advantage. Stay and Cook, though, put one in the boat, cut into it a little bit there. This is Miller and Canterbury on the board. Salazar and Human, Moreno, and the rest. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by Power Pole. And by Skeeter Boats. Into our fourth hour here, getting close to that halfway point in the day. Championship Sunday, time is, time is clicking away. And it gets more insistent through the rest of the day here, but uh, plenty of time to get some work done for these teams. High mm -hmm. tide was a little later today. Yesterday. Uh, 
Actually, best fishing really should be ahead. Them. The couple mm. we've seen, they haven't been push making a lot of push of water movement. We've actually been seeing them with our eyes, and there's there's so few fish here. Like we, it's I almost feel like it's a waste of time to even blind cast. And uh, that's why we're not casting a whole bunch. We're really staying ready in case we see one. Yeah, uh, really need to make it count because it's few and full opportunities this morning. And we had uh, one little oversized fish eat, and that's been it so far. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully see a couple more fish and have a couple more opportunities before this tide gets too low. Kinda we kinda married ourselves here now, so we definitely saw more fish yesterday, but Oh yeah. I mean it wasn't crazy. No, it wasn't crazy. We know they're here though. We'll, we'll stumble we'll have a few more shots for sure. At least I hope. Something just came up over there. Water's cleaner, sun's right, so conditions are perfect for us to sight fish them, so just gotta creep along. There's one. Catch one. You see good eyes. Come on, come on, sucker. He didn't eat. Oh, he's over here. That's him. I don't see him. I did awesome. see him. Boy, I thought he's going to charge it. I'd like to land in Reeves here. Reeves hooked up. Third place team. Looks like they're eight, around eight, where eight, they caught the that fish through. yesterday. So quickly. Eat it so long. <laughs> Atta boy, get one. Good job. Hey, that's a freebie. Anything before 10 o'clock is a freebie. Oh, it's 10 o'clock already. Is it? Well, it's guess what? It's time to go. <laughs> I got some flyers in there. Take a look. I'm not going to kill him. Well, just take a look. I'm going to cut that. All I'm right. going to tell the, the man measuring the fish that... Uh, yeah, one second. First fish of the day, probably a three pounder. Come right up off the bank out of the grass. I lost one right before this. He was a pretty good fish too. So. Twenty-one and a quarter inches. What's he weighing? He weighs. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and a half. I'll take him Have all day, every day. Put him right ahead of Cook and Eshte, who just uh, bumped themselves up into second place a few minutes before. Really out. tight race for second. Yep. I got it. This format is really set up to give, <laughs> to make it dramatic. Yeah, it really is yeah, because can... with only one angler fishing, you know, with Myers and Chavez, it's they're handicapped, and the uh, and the, and they can only catch four. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's far from over. If you were Chivas, would you be fishing right now? Friend, I'm going to leave it seat up for a little Absolutely. while. Absolutely. That, yeah. that fish was upside down, so we're going to keep checking on him. Oh, speaking of that, he's got yeah, a rod back in his hand, yeah. so. Hey, might not have a hook, though. I don't know. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Yesterday he was duping me over here. I didn't know. Yeah. But I, do, I don't see a problem. You'd hate to catch one beside your buddy, but if you're casting way off to the right on a place that he's not even casting and targeting, then that's just a bonus lucky fish that none of y'all would have targeted on a normal hour basis. Yeah. Totally agree, but you can just tell it's very hard for him to cast to the side. Yes, yes. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just he he's is, that. He is front centric. Yeah, front centric is a. He just needs to just bomb it out there and, Look at him. and soak it, dead stick it, whatever you want to call it. And, just let it let it be. Maybe you get a bonus one. I think we read his mind. He was about to throw out <laughs> front, and he set his rod down and put his hands behind his back. We 
he got to mark that one. He's got a hook in him. I put way too much water in there, man. We're going to have to probably let some out in a little while. Is he turned over? No, he's fine. Y'all get any foam in y'all water? Yeah. Um, Do you use foam off? No. Dude, you need to. That shit's badass. I mean, you put one teeny tiny drop, poof, foam's gone. Were you scrambling? It's made for aquariums. Yeah. Is it cool continuously all day? Oh, does it? It's called foam off. Who makes that? Uh, foam off. I, I buy it from uh, Tackle Warehouse. Oh. Hot mic. Hot mic. What? There are people that actually listen to this all day? Yeah, there's somebody in the studio that watches all time cameras all day. Really? Nice. So somebody was in the studio listening to you talk about squirting. <laughs> no. That's what he just said. No. <laughs> he said there's somebody in the studio watching all 10 cameras. He's watching the camera, not listening to audio the whole time, is he? Yeah, he's just watching. Oh, OK. Man, you got to mess with him. No. You, you messed my whole deal up. Oh, we're listening. <laughs> Best to just assume we're always listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But my man made the cast. Did she yeah. just hand Myers a Mountain Dew? I mean, they're going total yeah. Bojangles menu, drinks, everything. Oh, yeah, it's going. Davey, don't you worry. If you... <laughs> That's a Mountain Dew all day long. If you put me on two fish, or vice versa, I'll, I'll be your assistant all day long, whatever you want. I wish I'd have called that first one. Oh, he's going Seth Fighter Mountain Dew in the back pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure I had him. And I had him. He's about to eat the whole hook. Has he got it in his gullet? Uh, he got it in his throat, in his crushers. You can just see the, about half the weight. He might swallow the whole freaking thing. Huh? I know. Well, he's only three and a half, so we catch four four, we'll cull him out. I wonder if he been a while since we checked in with Canterbury and Miller. Got a keeper in the live well early today. Leave our first keeper. Tell you what, you might stand up there. Both and let your court come back down and I'll flip over in the edge of that. Yes, number. You got him? Yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Wait, wait. There he is. Ah. He's a little puppy. Not. About it. Let's try and try and keep quiet though, because he's gonna. If there is a school, we don't want to spook him. 
We'll measure him anyway. Just to see where they're, where they're where he's starting. Gotta be seventeen. You don't lay it now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's. Whoa! Oh, well. Whoa! Wait a minute. Oh, you know Where's what? the thing at? He is right on the number here. Perfect pinch at he sixteen measure. and a half, and then my touch. I need the perfect pincher. He's short. Huh? He's short. He shrunk up on me. <laughs> Did he? See, that thing's not going to pinch it good enough. You go to sit, yeah, he's 16 and a half. It's all right. Ah. Well, if he's here, there's yeah. some here that will. Oh, there's going to be some here. I'm going to leave this here. There's fish. Just a matter of catching a key. Scott Canterbury's done a good job with catching redfish this week on bass lures. Yeah. <laughs> Vibrating jig. He was pitching this morning. Maybe not a Texas rig. Could have been a gulp shrimp with a jig head. There we go. Giant yeah, right one. I don't think so. I don't think so. Can we go midday? Can you lift the power poles for me? Mm-hmm. It does like a 12 pounder, 15 he's pounder. He's not that big, but he's, he is over. Pitching bushes. That's a fat. That's a fat fish too. Twenty-seven on the button. Mm-hmm. Begging. Yeah. Still looking for their first keeper. Rickard and Atkins. Closer and closer to the midway point of the day. We still got Myers and Chivas on top by about six and a half pounds. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Bassmaster Live pushing forward with our live coverage here. Championship Sunday at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup. Third such tournament, first two in Texas. If you're just picking up with us, we have made a big move around the Atlantic side, South Carolina. Winyah Bay, Georgetown's our headquarters here and a full 100 miles of coastline and connected inshore areas in play here. That's a look at it right there. Pretty well distributed out through that area. Uh, 10 teams, team of mullet and mullet, Ken and Jeff mullet. Saw two of them up here swimming by the boat. They were too big. Caught two overs. Uh, a little frustrating. Two overs and one was a heartbreaker because it was again it was right there where uh, right there where you throw it in the boat and you know it's a keeper and then you start wondering and then it's a quarter over or whatever it was and. Uh, those hurt, especially when you're in the position that we are today. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly. But they're eating, and we're catching them in a spot that we're not, don't normally fish on this tide, so that's been a bonus. But had a tailor back there and one eating, and couldn't get those to eat either, so we're just gonna keep slugging it out right now. Yeah, we found there's like at least one or two schools in this little stretch right here. And if we could pick one of those up, we have two in the boat in a hurry. Most of those are slot fish. But we'll give it a little bit, and then we're going to go, probably go back. And there's a guy fishing back there where we caught the other two. So I don't know if we can even get in there. But we got a couple more banks down here, and then we'll move back into the back where we were yesterday catching all the fish in <clears throat> about another hour or so. 
But, but now you can see the shell bank that we're fishing. And so everything is starting to fall out, especially as hard as this tide is dumping today. It's falling fast. And so everything is coming out a little bit quicker. And now they should be out here. It's just a matter of oh, shoot. That was getting, good. This, <laughs> getting, this, getting this live scan. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh at your partner like that. Getting this live scan um, going because this water is pretty dirty. And you can, it's just, it's one of those tools that we didn't know we needed until this week. And so <clears throat> it's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But anyhow, gonna keep slinging the triggered bait. Limo Rita on the spinner bait until something pops it, yeah. Something pops it, so. <sighs> Just hope and pray. We need to get a couple four and a half pounders. Hopefully get, you know, close to 17, 18 pounds a day. It's possible. Just get them to fit. All these super fat fish in here. One, one thing is when you can make that cast and you can put it on the bank and bring it back into the water and then just slow, slowly just bump it all the way down. Unless you're in the school of fish, then you just chuck it in the school of fish. But if you're trying to catch the ones that are just cruising down the bank, put it on that edge. Bring it back in, make sure you're hooked somewhere weedless to where you can make that thing work. And that's what we were doing back there in that grass where we caught, well, Ken caught the one on the pot bobber, I caught the one on this, but, and then just slowly work it back. I'm, I, I, I need to slow back down right now. I need to slow back down. Just don't nick your line on that stuff when you're reeling it back through. That's not a good idea. I think that may be why I lost two fish the other day as I was bumping that knot on the way down and that didn't help me out at all. But if that's what you have to do to catch the fish, that's what you do. A lot of times too. Back at the team Schlopper and Powers. Also looking for their first keeper of the day. Sixth place just behind Canterbury and Miller. That point looks good. That thin grass. Here, you got it? Okay. Reeves hooked up. Right, you gonna let me catch a fish? Not yet. That's a good one. That's a real good one. I'm here. I'm gonna be close to the line. Mm -hmm. Like him line burner, baby. I think the trolling motor's still on. That's all right. No, I ain't. It's that, it ain't on. Okay. He just hit it. You let him die. Oh, my God. Ah. Ah. There's another one right there. God. I think that one's too big anyway. I wouldn't worry about that one bit. Oh, you give him a boat, just bring him to me head up. 
Okay. Come on, man, really? I jacked him too. I wouldn't worry about it. He's too big. I was about to mention, I really was. I don't think we've seen a fish lost no. that was maybe a slot fish. Yeah. Not so sure we've seen one lost at all before. Not on camera. We've yeah. heard them talk about having, having right. a few break off and come off. We've been very fortunate. But, uh, yeah, not, not common, which is good. Happens again, I'm gonna go to my bigger rod. Jack them upside the head. Uh, remember, they're little. They don't weigh eight pounds. Oh. <clears throat> get in my mouth. Jerk it. I know he won't do us any good, but I would like to short string one that big. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. That fish was heavy, I'm telling you, for his size, he was heavy. This one's not. This one will go in the box. He's not too small. Okay. Mm-hmm. Too small, I think. I do too. Sixteen? Yep. Of course. Yeah. So, a continuation of my statement, I would rather short string <laughs> one that's too big than too small. It would be a lot more fun. Uh, that wasn't bad, but when I finally got a hold of it. You got my hopes up when you said this one was going to the box. Come on. I thought it was going to. I thought he was about a three pounder when I finally got him out of the grass. Justin Atkins is one of two Alabama elite competitors in our field today. He's from Florence, Alabama, Pickwick Lake. They got some pretty good red drum on Pickwick, but not the ones that we're fishing for this week. <laughs> yeah. Different kind of species of red <laughs> drum, but big ones. Especially around the dam where the water moves and changes every hour, just like here, I guess. Behind the back again today. Come on. Oh. He ate it. He ate it. He tried to. You know what they do? They don't go far. Go back in there again. Well, we saw this happen yesterday and they doubled up. Uh huh. I don't think so. I mean, upper slot. Oh, for sure. <clears throat> Tell you what, it's 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 happening right now. They're they're patterning up just like they were yesterday. <clears throat> Came around. This is the first little look, oyster look, reef look, 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 we could see. They're right there. That's that's a that's a sheephead. Don't cast at him. 
the pattern the pattern's starting to start. It's, it's cranking up right now. First little school we've seen. About 10 fish. Swam right by the boat. Some people may ask, well, why didn't you catch them? I don't think they're on the bite just yet, but they're fixing to start. Thought he was working a glide bait, Davey, with his real handle action there. I thought he was side to side working it. We will keep our eyes on that team, all teams, all of our 10 teams out there today. Talking about uh, impending good things to come. We hope that's the case. Kind of expected like the last part of this day to be pretty strong, I think, uh, in general. That's as far as the speculation goes, we're going to step away for hour one hour, and we'll be back with plenty more action, taking you all the way to the end of Championship Sunday. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Up and rolling again, we are back. Bassmaster Live continues our live coverage of Redfish action, the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. And of course, this is Championship Sunday. Quick look at our leaderboard, unofficial. Per Bass Track, we've got Myers and Chivas on top. Right now, they have a full limit in the boat and a good, good lead right now. Land and Reeves, Travis Land, Jeremy Reeves have added a keeper as well, so they have uh, doing their best to keep pace, but uh, boy, I'm telling you right now, it's uh, looks like uh, the Cody Chivas and Fred Myers, are, it's theirs to lose. <laughs> Someone's gonna have to make a major move in order to catch up to them. And here we are. Okay. Now, Man, During the break there, Fred Myers needed to catch two keepers. He has done that. This is a third one. This is a possible upgrade, I guess. That's why we're measuring. This is going to be a big, big upgrade. Yeah, we got one that's just a hair over 17, and he's going mm. to slide in perfect. Mm. That's a nice four-pound wow. fish. 22 inches. Take out a two and a half, put in a four. All right, let's keep him low. All right, we gotta put him put in the board. Up put the board up front. Yeah. Never, don't put him in the well, yeah, Put the board up. I got him. I gotta get that little 17 out. So we gotta do a little dance here when we got four fish in the well. This is the fun part. I gotta try to find a 17 incher. When they're 20, 26, 27 inches, they're a little easier to grab out of the well. I think I got him first try. <laughs> Let's get that zip tie off. Yep. Where's the cutters? I got some in my bag. Get him in the well, Fred. I'm getting him. I got to tag him. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm cutting the zip, tail, the zip tie. That's how we mark this fish. And I'm going to let this one go. Woo! Hey, where's the boga? That feels good. Right where's here. Right here. All right, weigh this fish so we know what he weighs before I put him in there. Keep him low. Yeah. He's a shade over four. Woo! Nice, come on. Let's go, Give me some of that, Give Seth. Me Give, me Give me that. Yeah, hey, on, what's the come on, Cody. code word? Come on, Cody. Boom! <laughs> Sunscreen. Boom! <laughs> Sunscreen is the code word. Oh, boy. Bro. We got some weight. Woo! You don't know how hard that is. Let's keep going. Not let off the gas. Where's the bogo? Right there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, we're going to get them while they're fighting. Let's, Weird, let's, yeah, let's remember. You're ready to go. You're unhooked. Keep fishing because yep. you got a 2.8 to upgrade. Woo! 
Fred said you don't know how hard that is. I'd say there's nine other teams that know exactly how <laughs> yeah. hard that is. Carter <laughs> Myers, Bob Bill, Stacy Brandon, Laura Myers. That's my son. Laura Myers is my wife. Stacy Brandon is my account manager at my office. She lets me leave here, do this. Bob Bell. He's encouraged me from day one to keep going at it. That's what it's about. I can't forget my mom and dad are here. And my mom will not pray for us to win. She will pray for us to do the best we can. And I can appreciate that. It's not that she doesn't pray that we don't win, but it's a sport that uh, is awesome and uh, she loves to watch us. And uh, this morning she prayed for safety. <laughs> I think she's been listening to Cody. <laughs> there you go. Small fish. Okay. But when we stepped away an hour ago, Fred Myers was fishing for his second two, for his his two keepers. He needed both of them. Yes. Oh, and yes. while that was happening, while that hour was too, right? passing yeah, by, he was good. able to put both of them in the boat. That's a little better. That's a better fish. Yep. Yeah, if you're just tuning in, it's a four fish, fish per boat limit, but each yeah, angler has to catch too. their two fish. And uh, yeah. yesterday and today it was a little awkward that uh, only Fred was fishing for a while, but he did his job of, both yeah. days. That was one of those keepers right there, that 17, which is now back swimming. Uh, yeah. He has been upgraded, a 2.8, a 2.8 upgrade. Did I hear Woo. Cody say that? Probably so, we yeah. Got, probably uh, we got four. Cody's back fishing. He's out of timeout. Our smallest fish in there is about two and three quarter. Um, but we're thankful to have every one of them. But we got three over four in there too, so. We need one and, uh, more, one more four pounder. We're feeling pretty good. Um, I think we're in the right zone. We had some locals come in. There's some boats coming around the corner and we just got it the right place at the right time. And we've been saying that for three days, two days. And it ended up, Cody's on. Nah, small fish. Oh, look at the other one chasing it. Hold on, hold small on. fish. It's a small. It's a small fish chasing him. Don't even worry about it. Another small fish, but we've been we've been doing this the last three days here. We catch a couple small ones, one good one, four or five small ones, an oversize. It's just a war of attrition right here to get slot fish, but. Fred was just saying, we've had local guys all around us today, and the funny part about this is, and they're just telling of how good this fishery is, we haven't seen another boat not catch a fish around us. I mean, that's just the truth. Every one of these guys fishing around us has caught fish, and uh, we just keep circling this island. Um, you know, I can't say enough, it's, they got a lot of redfish in South Carolina. And there's four in that slot limit, sitting in that well, which is key for us right now. The only team to have a four fish limit two of our three days so far as well. That's even Feel bigger. Uh, maybe he's going out. Yeah. Yeah, he better. I don't know. No. Nah. No. False alarm. Well, when we were talking to him before this tournament started, we had a couple of teams say if uh, whoever catches limits all three days is going to be in the top three. No doubt. Uh, another person this said there's going to be one team that catches a limit all three size. days. That's out, too. It looks like fish. the team that catches These only two limits has yeah. certainly got the big lead right These now. These are the key, and that slot limit has really done a number on this fishery. Yep. Those bigger fish that sometimes might get taken other places you know they get a they get a little smaller window here to make it what they call a escapement boy they are getting some bites now and they haven't moved and you can see the boat in the background that was well hidden by the reeds is fishing faster so that it just shows like how slow that they have been picking apart some of these places because they know they're in the right zone 
and they're wrapping their head around the slot limit. It's frustrating not being able to bring in 26, 27s, but an ode to the fishery. They've You said it in the first two hours of the tournament, the team that catches the most fish, it's hard to change up your game plan and strategy to go after big ones like we see in the Elite Series and things like that. But with Redfish, it seems like the more you catch, the better shots on goal you're going to have. Second place team, Travis Land and Jeremy Reeves. Also active during the break when we left, they had the they had one fish in the boat. Come on. And this is what transpired Come on. Get in the boat. moments ago. Get his big ass in the boat. Come on. Keeper. That's what I like to hear. Come on, baby. Get your red behind in this boat. Come on. Bang. Yes, sir. Bang, bang, choo choo train. Right. What I'm talking about. Just keep grinding, it's gonna happen. Good little fish, man. That's a good little fatty right there. Good little fish. <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about now. There's oh. the chunks we were catching yesterday. <clears throat> it's just a little bit early. It's just a little bit early. But that right there is what we need. Three more of. That's my partner. Right there on the point. Right there on the point, babe. Likes that little Berkeley gulp. Scooby snack. Redfish Scooby snack. Look at that, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful redfish. So, oh, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't weigh him yet, but I guarantee you he is. Look at there. 21, 20 and three quarters. He is. He is three and a half. Hmm. Just need them a little bit longer, but that's all right. We need four to start with. We need to start with four. Come here, little guy. Take you for a little boat ride. I'll lose that sucker. Take you for a little boat ride and turn you loose. How are the guys still good in here? Yours has the weight in his mouth, so we know the difference right now. We're going to have to mark the next one. All right. You catch. Again, that was earlier today. Now back out live with Travis Land and Jeremy Reeves. Team from Texas. Come on. Hmm? Come on. Nice. Oh, shit. Turn Holy the toe motor off. I got you. I got you. Thank you. Watch your line. I got it. Trying to get it out of there. Here it comes. Another good one. You ready? Yeah. Right side. Left side. Hey, yes, sir. That's a good one. That's another. Hey, that's a good one, Bubba. Four good pounder. Job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Four pounder. That's what I'm talking about. Fire back on that point. I got you. I got you. I'm arm wrapped up on the end of the rod. Just like yesterday, hey, things. Bigger now. Yeah. Getting about bigger. this. Bigger and better. Part of the tide. When it's that's what we about. need to do. Just keep midway out. At not it. quite midway out. So um, crucial to have four today. They made it happen Can't yesterday. Can't tell you how important it is to just get four and then we can work on our culling. <clears throat> Speaking of culling, partner, where are those culling, be those culling balls at? Back in my tackle bag. Okay. He likes that old Berkeley gulp. You know, there for a minute, I thought I was gonna have my two before you. I should've known better. Uh-huh, come on, dude. You know who you're fishing with. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Man, well, that, that this fish came off of that point right there, right off the edge of that shell, just like we've been catching. That water's coming around those shell points, and they're just posted up right there on the inside. This fish is gonna be four pounds. Oh, boy. And he's gonna be he ought to be about 22 and a quarter, 22 and a half. No, 20, 21 and three quarters. So 21 and three quarters, four pounder. We're on the right fish. Put him in a box, Bobby. I'll tell you what, we don't have to mark this one yet because yours has still got the jig head in his mouth, okay? Right, right. My two don't. Ooh. That fish and Myers Chivas' upgrade. Now, uh, Landon Reeves sit five pounds, 10 ounces back in second place. Now over to Dwayne Eshte. Drew Cook in third. Keeper. For their yeah. second keeper. Whoa! 
Oh, shit. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Blew one by him there. <laughs> I used the shit all the time when we... <laughs> Mm. Get, you need to get Dwayne this day going this morning we, or this afternoon. We haven't heard much out of him today. There you go, Drew Cook. All right. A little okay. slide. Yeah. Slid two things by him. Dwayne turned around and the fish was already behind his back yeah. before he turned back around. <laughs> was that a gold butterfly? Uh oh. Right there. <laughs> Flying by my head. No, that was a red drum. <laughs> Landon Reeves tightening things up a little bit. Still one to go. I mean, he's got a butterfly limit. on his hat. Are you kidding oh, me does. right now? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know uh -oh. they're fixing it. Golden butterfly means fish on the way. <laughs> or so Dwayne Eshtay told us yesterday. I'm on again. God, I, there's no way you can't hook up with a golden butterfly on your hand. Come off. Oh, he's doubled up. He come off. Give me a break. Yeah, the butterfly's still on there. That's definitely an upgrade. That's an upgrade. Yes, sir. Important fish. We just talked about it. This fish gonna be close to 23. We just talked about me not uh, me not fishing, but how important it would be to get another pound. Man, we didn't go 20 yards right after we caught that first fish. We caught this one. This is a real one here. This could be better than that. My other fish is just barely over three pounds. This is a good one. I cannot believe I lost that fish. Well, mine just my, my bait just fell out too on its own. This fish is four and a quarter. That's that's. That's awesome. That is freaking awesome. Look here, 22 and a quarter, four and a quarter pounds. So now I gotta, I gotta find the smaller of my two because we're only allowed two a piece. So I got two in here. We'll keep him out of the live well and I'm gonna find my smallest one. Pretty sure that's my smallest one. No jig head is in his mouth. Okay. Three and a quarter. Pretty dang sure that's my smallest one, but I'm gonna make darn sure before I take possession of him. That's Jeremy's. Well, there you go, things tightening up considerably here in the last hour and change. Championship Sunday here, South Carolina. Still Myers and Chivas on top. They're both fishing to upgrade. Ooh. Travis Land also fishing to upgrade as well. Look close, you I can see, see those you. fish. What a shot. On the right there a little bit, on the left wow. by himself a little bit. Up they are the, crawling that flat here. By the grass. Wow. I could even maybe catch one of those. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with here. Bountiful, bountiful redfish fishery here. And we are having a great show that has gotten very, very close. Be right back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by TH Marine and by Yamaha. And the 
the final half of our fishing day. Well into it, as a matter of fact, right now, less than three hours remain in fishing time. And the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, that is, <laughs> that that is, is the awful. kind of fishery we're dealing with here. Man, oh man, they are active too. There's a group food. of bottlenose dolphins just waiting to oh, find yeah. this fish. <laughs> they, are, they got their lookout watching that for sure. And we are watching all that's going on, which is quite a bit in the last 20 minutes. We have seen that leaderboard change. We've got both anglers in our, our number one team, Myers and Chivas, out there up at the front. They've both got their limits in the boat. They're both looking to upgrade. Yeah, Alrighty. guys, so. Cody's fishing, I'm fishing. We got four. Uh, I know y'all have heard that a million times, but it's important to us because we've got four pretty decent ones. One we could call, um, one of them's mine, but uh, we're looking to try to just catch, you know, just a kind of a freak fish. We got the rest of the day to do it. Um, we've been saying it for two days. We've been sitting, waiting on the tide to get right. And we've kind of just skipped around a little bit, caught them, but skipped around them a little bit. But uh, we're at the right place at the right time, and they're they're right here. Um, and it should go on for another hour, and then we'll go to our low water stuff. But right now we're still in that in between bite. The fish are moving. I think these fish are pulling up here. I don't think they were here this morning. They might have been inside that grass or offshore here. But uh, for whatever reason, um, we got them. We got them, and it feels good. May not be enough to win, but we got our four. I, I was in Louisiana one time, this old man that where we launched, um, we were practicing, and he says, you know, when you go fishing, look for butterflies. That's where the redfish are. And this is no kidding. And I don't know that there's anything to it, and I'm not very superstitious at all. but. On our low water spot, we had like three butterflies fly across of us yesterday, hooked up. We just started catching them. We went in. Look right here. A few look minutes right ago, here. Look, right here. look at this. Look at this butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> right behind you. Oh, here's another one. Look at this. It's funny you say that because he said, always look for the butterflies and you'll find redfish. And it just so happens we got butterflies. We didn't have butterflies five minutes ago. I'll tell you, I had butterflies in my stomach. But butterflies out here, they just showed up. So that's a tip. Go look for butterflies. You might catch redfish. Did you hear he heard that story from an old man in Louisiana? Yeah. It was uh, Dwayne. Dwayne S.J. Yes. <laughs> Senior. Senior. Hey, easy on Dwayne. <laughs> it was Dwayne's dad. Myers, come on. <laughs> That'd make a great children's book. That would make a great children's book. <laughs> Our top two, chasing butterflies. All I know is, yep. Yeah. See, there's Reeves and Leah. That is awesome. I, there must be redfish everywhere. Oh and there are. Gosh. Oh my gosh. You see the, there's and a flounder. Oh no my goodness, no way. shot. No, no way. way. That's, no, they say that's real. They say it's real. I don't know if they've had time to construct something like that. Whoa. Wow. It's going to be a good afternoon. It's going to be a good this afternoon. This is incredible. If I'm the mullet team, though, I'm asking that butterfly why he's not as powerful as the other butterflies because we're with the top two teams and then and they're, they're not third place at the Here we go. Here we go. And that one stuck with him for. I think the fish are biting everywhere today. The butterflies are everywhere. Yeah. So awesome that Fred had that story for us. The old man in Louisiana told him. <laughs> <laughs> Connecting the dots here. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go sit right there on that point. Oh, yeah. We can come down this edge where we caught them at the stakes, and we then. We just ain't caught nothing. No, I know. We need to idle. We need to idle around to that point after that. Okay. And actually, look, this mall is gonna try and. 
Back over Schlopper Owens, Ben Owens, the local guy. Charleston Airy, Schlopper, Elite Series Pro. Afraid they're down south of the butterfly. Yeah, they need to move toward the butterfly. Still looking for the first keeper. I don't know if we should move. That's a better one. Get the net, get the net, get the net. I'm gonna, uh, Just get the net. I'm getting the net. Well, you don't have any time, dude. This is a freaking good one. Hurry up, hurry up. It's right here. I'm waiting on you. Get the talons down. I think we gotta sit right here. We actually probably need to move out. That's the same cast I've been making. That's a freaking good one. Oh, sorry. Don't turn that motor on. Or are you gonna sneak us out? And get that live well going. That is a Texas rig. This is when we gotta make it happen, Ben, so don't be, just be no. efficient. Get your research going. Please. Remember how fast it happened yesterday. That's why we gotta be ready to go. Well, hurry up. I don't know if it matters. Um, get that. Are the talons up or down? Okay, I'm gonna get positioned so I can keep me. That's like four or five I've caught on that same cast. Yep, I'm gonna just try not to. I think that's like, that's like the, remember yesterday, I think this is just like the point that they, now I don't know what fricking pocket it was. Yeah, I just don't see any. That's like exactly where I caught him yesterday, wasn't it? Or was it down there a little further? Skeeter bird's eye view. Just, yeah, oh, just, that's all right. Well, that was our first keeper, so that's a good shots sign. That's beautiful everywhere. The little ones were coming, now the slots are coming. Wow. So we've got like, I don't know, at least it's right now where we got some time to, to work with it. Back over to second place land and reeds. Hey, which, you gotta do what you gotta do on day three. I mean, you know. Check him out. You gotta do what you gotta do on day three. I mean, I need a little bit of luck. I need one more fish and we're gonna be good. Catch him right there. You're gonna be known as the butterfly man back in Orange, Texas now. Is that good or bad? <laughs> uh, it's on the neighborhood. Well, you did eat a banana before or during Bass Live today, so you can't be that superstitious. Normally, no bananas involved in fishing I'm at all. I, I'm not on that train. I, I don't. I'm if, not on if, that train. Yeah. I know the story of why bananas in boats are superstitious, but it's not because of bass fishing and catching limits, that's for sure. It's about literally life and death. My philosophy is you, 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 go, banana, you go with bananas, you gotta worry about leprechauns and all, all everything else. Yeah, all the you just open a big old door. Yeah, don't butterflies, exactly right. everything. Same lucky, lucky underwear. <laughs> I mean, come on. 
Really? We're all adults here. There is our updated leaderboard right now with Myers and Chivas on top. At a five pound advantage over Land and Reeves. Land and Reeves now we figure they, they are still Reeves searching for his yeah. second fish. So Land and Reeves, Land just cold, yet the team doesn't have their limit yet. Hopefully Reeves gets his fourth. They'll both try to cull after that. We got it sorted out now, that is for sure. Third place, Eshte and Cook still got three more to go to a limit. Be right back. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Things happening fast and furious here as we get closer and closer to the end of Championship Sunday. We've still got a ways to go. Don't worry about that. We've got a couple hours fishing time, at least for these 10 teams that are left out there. Landon Reeves, top left in second place there, cutting into the lead of Chivas and Myers just a little bit during the course of this day. Ashtay Cook still in second place. Cook hooked up. Number two. Good fish. I hope he measures. In the grass, huh? Mm -mm. Is that a fire? Yes. Oh, he's gonna measure. All day long. All day long. All day long. Yes. Wayne, well, we're two away from 75 grams. All right, Drew, put me on some fish. Yeah. Give me some love there. Mm. All right. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You fishing. I'm going to drive the boat. Well, Quarter ounce, big bite, DJ head, little gulp shrimp. They bite it. Drew Cook saying, right I think that's what he called a good fish yesterday. <laughs> Day one, quarter ounce jig head, gulp shrimp. Two in the boat now for. Cook and Eshte, two more to go. It's gonna be essential that they get those two as well. They wanna have any hope of being near the top at the end of it all. Schlopper and Powers. They must have moved on, huh? There we go. Another good one. That might be too big. That might be too big, but it feels all right. Hurry up. He's coming right at us. Right at us. Oh, dang, that's way too big. Just net him to be, make it quicker. Powers or the Dude, fish? He's all the way down. <laughs> he's talking to everybody in that boat, everything in that <laughs> yeah, boat. There it is. Those long players up there. He's the captain. Where you got those long players? Hey, he, he's been backing it up by putting Checking some meat in the, meat in the boat. Good fish. Ready. 
so different than how I freaking operate. We don't see every fish they catch. There's there. so many, but percentage-wise, he's caught a more overs percentage-wise oh, yeah. number of yeah, fish caught than anyone. Just unlucky day number one. Caught a bunch of good ones that just barely over. Ain't no way I'm getting that out of there. For a minute, dude, he felt good right away, and then <laughs> that's on the Texas. Right? What? Are we positioned right for fishing? Yeah. I mean, it's fine right now. Like that was back a little further from where we've been getting them. Can we pop it on? Kind of hard to figure that this, these two wouldn't be at zero at this point of the day. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that at fish all. Fish right there in front of you. See him up there? There you go, right there. Real, real. They're back in the area where they were around a lot of fish yesterday, though. That might oh, that's not good. <sighs> wow. Look at that fish ripping. Now he looks a little bitty, huh? Come on, you gotta be a keeper. All right, I got one, I believe. There you go. Get your fish. Come here, Jiggy. Hold this Tiny, but he's a keeper. He ain't as small as you think. He's probably 22 inches. That's like that one yesterday, right now. <laughs> we think they small until you put them on a board. He looked real tiny up there swimming, actually. <laughs> You barely see him, Joe. I think he's definitely gonna keep though, finally. Thank goodness. Thank you, sir. What's that? It's in between the seats back there. At least you got him good. Yay! 22 and a half. On the board, Jake. What do you have to say for yourself? Man? Ah, shit. At least we got a fish. Thank goodness. Glad we were out. Bruce broke off an oyster shell and we were like, we think that's a fish. We're sticking with our four and a quarter average. There you go. I tell you, it ain't as small as you think they are. We think it's crazy. You got your bubbles on, Sean? You got the bubbles on? Yeah. Okay, I was asking. Come on! Let's go. Oh. Come on, buddy, let's go. Three mm. more. Like. They've got the motivator in the boat with Jake Latondras in the back as the camera guy. Not only will he help you push him off when you're late to weigh in <laughs> off a of sandbar, we but. going right now, boy. Root you on One real back. good one. Bunch of shorts, one too big but they just started biting pretty ferociously. So we got some time. If we can just get, that just broke off on the clams. God dang it. I don't want to be retying right now. I only got one hook left too. I'm gonna throw, I was, it'll take me two seconds, two minutes to tie this. That oysters are freaking. What I should do is tie on that. Remember that jig I had on yesterday for you? That one came. That one came through real good. I should tie that on that other. That same one? Yeah. I like it when they eat this Texas rig because I can get them in a lot quicker.
but I don't like throwing straight braid on shell and As that tide gets lower, those oyster shells become more, more so of a factor. Up areas here, we're kind of in our low and They are out zone. there, that's for sure, and stacked high. Went from popping corks to paddle tails. The water was a little cleaner over here yesterday, but we're just gonna slowly come down this bank. Every little oyster bar point, we're gonna power pull down, make a few fan casts around this oyster bar, and there's a school of fish in here. We got on late yesterday and caught a couple of fish, you know, a three and a three and a half. We lost another fish, had a couple other bites, but we saw, you know, probably a group of 10 to 15 fish in here mudding around. We just didn't have much time. So we got in here a little sooner today and hopefully we can get them in one of these little pockets or points and catch a couple of fish and try to upgrade, upgrade one more fish here at least. Make us feel a little better. I think it's gonna happen. We had too many fish in here yesterday afternoon to not catch a, another fish. It may not be an upgrade, but I think we're doing the right thing. I think we uh, got a good chance to upgrade here um, because we caught those two fish, bam, bam, and they're all slot fish too. Um, we caught three or four within just a few minutes and then we left, so. Um, it's just a key little, and, and there's been some boats over here fishing today, some local traffic, but it just doesn't get right until the tide gets right. And these fish kind of settle down in some of these pockets. And uh, we, hope, we hope they didn't uh, catch them all. We didn't see much go on. But you can see Cody's got a little oyster bar, but that's kind of what we're looking for. We want to be right on that edge right there. And... Uh, that's where these fish will be laying, right where that oyster meets the meets the mud. Poor little thing. It's queued up. Let's put it that way. I got them on that. It'll be in a package. And that'll play all your fish catches of the day. Sure. That's a good one. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. Oh, he broke me off. Fuck. Frick. Did it break your leader or your... That one was pretty big. Huh? That one was pretty big. Well... We just talked about how these oyster shells will become more and more of a factor mm, as they get... The water falls out on them, those fish, instead of being up in that vegetation, which they're tough to get out of, they're also tough to get away from those sharp mm. shells. Cut your line, whether it's fluorocarbon or the braid leader. Still got Myers and Chivas on top, Landon Reeves in second place, everyone else a, a good bit farther back as it stands right now, but there's time for that to change, that is for sure. Good time for us to step aside for just one moment and come right back. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Ten teams have been going at it hard out here for more than two and a half days right now. This is Championship Sunday at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, sponsored by Skeeter Boats. It's also the last day of Bassmaster Live for the right. year. That's right, that's right. That'll wrap up nine Started years up of in Bassmaster the Live. Second week of February to the last week of October. Nine years. Nine years it's wow. been on the air. Well, the pressure's on me. Drew to, Drew. Drew told me if I don't catch no fish, he can't buy no diapers for his for his son. So he really put pressure on me here to try to catch a fish. 
So we got two like perfect, perfect redfish. Um, if we can just get us two more, I like our, I like our chances. You know, it, uh, it is so hard. You know, it's easy to, to get bit and catch fish and all that stuff, but it's so hard to catch those, those ones that are in the, uh, in the slot. We've had a bunch of bites today that were, you know, a little bit over, um, <clears throat> some that were under, but we've got two really, really nice ones. So if we can get two more, I think we'll be just fine. But we got some time, we got almost three hours. So uh, we're gonna get after it and see if I can coach Dwayne into catching one. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> I'm a glorified knot tire now. Yeah. I got the perfect guy to be a teacher for sure. So Where's if I fail, I guess my teacher wasn't the good. It's the teacher's fault. <laughs> it's all on me. I'm good with it. <laughs> well, with one keeper in the boat today, but a good one over four pounds, and Salazar, been human. Well, there's a ton of bait here, tons of bait, clean water. So Aaron, um, you know, after catching that one fish, um, you know, what, what do we put together this uh, afternoon? Uh, we're putting together that, there's, they're definitely coming out of the creeks, the mouths. Um, we're gonna try to definitely make this thing get, come together here in the next, few minutes we just got a slow slack tide right now it's not really rushing in or out so trying to figure this out again um, it's kind of pre-fishing for us because we haven't fished in these conditions so we can try to make this work here in a second hopefully we can get another bite um, we got a backup spot that's been pretty good to us so hopefully run to that here in a little bit but there's tons of bait here it's it's bait it's everything we'd want they're just not biting. They're not coming out of the grass to bite. But yeah, these natural killers, whatever these are. Yeah, break you from wearing those short pants. Mm. <laughs> That's what they are. I think everybody we've had on camera with short pants is rough yeah. back to their legs. <laughs> What do they call them in South Carolina? No see -ems. No see -ems, that's right, yeah. I think that's what they call it in Florida, too. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, dang. How's that? That's fighting you. Yeah, 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 Okay, yeah, yeah. yep, I'm on it. Keep All right, get to that. <laughs> Start yelling right, at me. Uh, Start yelling at me. Oh, my God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Yes, keep sir. Just keep, take your time. Take your time and get them up here. Perfect one, boy. Perfect one. Okay. How are we going to keep them separate? Uh, maybe get that other live wall going. Okay. And we'll put you. Get back out there. Yep. Yep. Do we need to measure that one, Ben? Do we need to measure that one, Ben, or you think he's good, huh? Did you already put him in the live wall? He's right here. Oh, let me see. That's a good one. That is definitely a slide. Okay. Check them all. Coming in, Ben. Doesn't cost any extra. Going. Check it. Right? No, it sure doesn't. You do get a little bit of penalty and secondhand embarrassment if you're bringing it over. Good job, good job, good job. At this good point, job. well, at any Probably point three, it costs yeah. you money, but you certainly feel it on Championship Sunday if you uh, misjudge one of those fish. Mm. Today's the day they'll be handing out the checks. I missed one right before you hooked it too. Is it filling up, Ben? Is it filling up? This is that keeper number is it fill two for that it's team? Two. Yeah, okay. two for that. One today. for each? Um, what yeah. One for yeah. Pat, one yeah. for Ben. I'll do that. Should move them into fourth place. 
They will pass the team of Adams and O'Connell, which leapfrogged them after that most recent four-pounder by O'Connell and Adams. Oh, and that's how you do that. Good recovery, man. <laughs> Tony Villator. That was a good that's recovery. That's a trick and a trade that a friend of mine told me a long time ago. Friend in you Louisiana. Uh -huh. You that pull same a bow guy. in it and you pop and it shins, sends a shock down the line and it throws the lure forward and gets it unhung. For those, if we're live, for those that don't know a little trick, that's a trick that a friend taught me. A how, many people Dwayne, how many people Dwayne been <laughs> telling? <laughs> Dwayne dropped that tip on I know Dwayne tosses tossed at least one person in every boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. Kind of backed off, punted, and went, made a big long run, and tried some new water, and. <laughs> we did manage to pick up a fish, so oh my we're uh, fortunately we got some lower unit issues, so we're basically uh, limping slash fencing our way back towards the boat ramp because we have a long way back. So uh, right now we're just working a popping cork along the intercoastal canal. We've actually seen some fish, spooked some fish. Haven't caught any yet, but there's a few here, so we'll keep plugging away at them and see what happens. Who knows? Might get lucky. He said, popping cork leader. I've got a seven foot three medium action JH custom performance. Always 50 pound leader mono for me, or fluorocarbon with a four horseman cork. That's good. I set it up weedless. Right now I'm throwing a gulp uh, crawfish uh, with the 45 pound fins braid. Again, the 40G with 45 pounds is really small, and you can cast this thing into the wind for a mile. Uh, just another little tip from a pro. My setup's really similar. It's large custom, it's a Warthog model. It makes a really good popping rod. Um, I'll throw a 65 pound braid on a popping cork because I don't have to worry about spooking fish or getting fish that are line shy with it. I use 99% of the time when I throw a popping cork, I'm throwing a white three inch gulp shrimp. That's my go-to every day. Probably the most confident bait that I have is that bait right there. If you have fish for redfish and you don't own a bunch of those, you need to go get them because that is the best redfish bait ever made. Got him. Good one. That's where he was weakened. It's a it's what it's a slot for sure. I'm coming on the right side, so move that rod. It's another really good one. Yes, baby. Well, we get gotta get we gotta get him. We gotta get him though. Come to the other side. The other side. He's, I got him coming this way. All right, he's coming over here. Come on, baby. Don't you lose the Come on. All right, right get down there. In the get down there. Here, baby. Here, baby. I'm done. You go. You go. Can't ask for a much better one than that. I'm gonna throw him on the board just to check, Ben. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'd check him. I think it'd be wise to check that one. Did that's you see a, where that came from? Way yeah. If he's, measured, if he's in the slot, he's a perfect that one. one you he's, that other one? Dude, this one's long though. Ooh. No, I think he's good. Oh yeah, he's good. Oh. I, yeah. Slide him yeah, on he's back. Good. And when he relaxes, his oh man, he might not be good. I mean, if I push him. If they don't 
slide it down that far, do they? They'd slide it to the half inch. I think he's over. I'm gonna put him in there. Yeah, put him in there on the latch. But you gotta get back fishing. What's the... Uh, he's just, he's real long. What's the weight? Uh, well, I wouldn't even put it in. We don't even know if he counts. Oh boy. Mm. What do we have here? Got some muds going there. That's something big. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Is that, that a big redfish? Big bull redfish? Oh, that's big. It looks like a hammerhead. It's a shark. Oh, oh it is. It's yeah. a porpoise. porpoise. Up there looking for you a little... swallowed a big one. <laughs> <laughs> porpoise up there wallowing in the mud. Got some good competition going on and some changes ongoing, that is for sure. Plenty more to look forward to when we get back. Wallering in the mud. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by Power Pole and by Skeeter Boats. Going on Championship Sunday at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup competition. This was something that was going on yesterday. Our own Dave Mercer, a beautiful restaurant there, and we put the put the oyster challenge on him. Dave, eat an oyster for us, whether you've ever had one or not. And mm, <laughs> not bad. <laughs> what is Dave. it? Months that end in R or something like yeah. that, Dave? No, no, end in R. Have R in. Oh, have R in them. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Dave, uh, Dave kind of got enchanted by the oysters. I think. I think he really became a fan. He joined the cult. Did you say that his <laughs> stomach was a little bubbling yesterday? He did text me that his stomach was a little rumbly tumbly for a while, but <laughs> I did see him do the weigh-in, so everything must have. Dave Mercer worked reminded out all right. us that well, he, he will, tough it out. Yeah. If you ask him to do something on camera, he's a he's a pro. He's an entertainer. He'll do it, including eating a cicada, which I he did. Kentucky actually, Lake. Mark Zona and I goaded him to it. It was one of our stupid tricks through the years, and <laughs> and uh, Dave Mercer, man. What a, what a good deal. And now, Dave, there's Dave now. I, we, we never asked you earlier today about the aftermath of that oyster fest there. Did you, everything turn out okay? Uh, everything turned out okay. Um, I, I think what my problem was, guys, is is I went too hard. I mean, uh, you, you, I, you know me, I always overdo it, and and I did it again. I mean, I went too hard and too fast. I, I, I don't know, I dropped a couple of dozen of them before I left that place. And and um, yesterday's weigh-in was a little quicker because I needed to get <laughs> off the stage. So uh, we got done, and uh, everything's good, though. I loved them. It was great. It was, uh, it was a very enjoyable meal it uh it's something i'm going to eat again in the future and guys let's just be honest i mean when davy when you when you told me to do this i mean I, I went to place after place and they're like yeah we're not doing it we're not but i had to go to merle's inlet which is the saltwater capital of south carolina and the fine folks at the claw house hooked me up and i made your dream come true so i got thinking to myself and i thought you know what what can I give Davey back? What kind of gift? And I'll be honest, I went down a bad road. I mean, I was looking into shipping you um, prairie oysters, mountain oysters. If you don't know what that is, Google it. It's appalling. But we couldn't get them there in time. But then I realized you guys are in Little Rock, Arkansas. I mean, Arkansas, the home of the Razorbacks, the home of the pig suey. <laughs> What better to give you than this gift right here? A, a beautiful, a beautiful pig's hoof. A big old pig foot pig to foot. enjoy here on the live set here today. I have ancestors that ate those things, but. Well, now. I would never challenge you to eat something that gross. <laughs> we even got you some napkins, baby. Uh, yeah, well, I, I. You're well, a man of your word. I mean, it says they're ready to eat. It does say they're ready Dave, to eat. The ready to goes eat? two ways. Is Davey ready to eat? Hey, that lid is halfway <sighs> off, so watch yourself. Well, those aren't Big Johns. Oh, Big Johns, all right. They are. Those are the best. <laughs> <laughs> we spared no expenses. 
<laughs> so how do you eat a pig foot? <laughs> what, oh, Tony? we got to take that lid off there. Okay, we'll, we'll unstrap this for you, Dave. How is it leaking in the lid? I don't know. This is going to be goodness. <laughs> Never <here>. mind that. <laughs> this is salty. A little sweet, maybe. You might have to just. Oh, there we go. We got a little uh, bit of it. The goodness. We'll try to. Oh, oh, we go. got the it. Smell oh, smell there we go. The aroma is You know what? Wonderful. We're going to actually oh put this gosh, on. Let's put this on the plate. Just so Howard doesn't kill us later. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> We're calling the hogs. Yeah. Ooh. How do you get them out? Oh, is it multiple? Is it one Ooh. big one? Is it one pig <laughs> suey? <laughs> Dave, I love you, but I don't know if I can do this. We might have to go to commercial break. Yeah. It's you like don't, you don't have meat's to do it falling off you of this thing while I'm trying to the get it out. Viewers. There oh, we go. Oh, that's a good one. Your play. That's a good. That's one of the good ones. Mercer, can you see this? I know you can't. Can you? Oh, there, right over there. Can you see this? That looks like a baby pig, not a pig's foot. Yeah. Oh, they got the nail trimmed and everything. Oh man. Gosh, it stinks. <laughs> hey, hold your nose. <laughs> See, this in. is the one thing people think because I'm from South Carolina, I would eat some. Like, I would. I have never eaten some of. You still haven't yet. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it stinks so bad. There's no horseradish. There's no uh, crackers. Come on, a bite, Davy. <laughs> We'll bring you some great <laughs> jelly. How about that? At this. God, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Only for you, Dave Mercer. <laughs> oh my God. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> pig suey! Woo! <laughs> pig suey! Woo! <laughs> Pig suey! <laughs> Razorbacks! I'm gonna puke that stinks so bad! Oh. That oh, is, man. We oh. Baby, hey, you're a champ. <laughs> I mean, the whole crew should. I mean, a team building. Tommy, grab one, Roddy, pull one. Oh, down. no. So, yeah, I'm so, so Mercer, I mean, Ronnie, is there a thing as, like, Overkill. Is there a thing like yeah. soaking a pig's foot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm seriously choking. <laughs> Here's some water. Thank you, Dave. Oh, my gosh. Dave, I will give you some Here, have water. Have y'all ever tried to eat one of those hey, things? I never challenged <laughs> him to eat anything. Did you eat so, them? Oh, no, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, Tommy. Not too bad. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm, good on the mouth. I don't even I still speed, ask for him by name. <laughs> We're going to get you some towels or some paper towels. It's just like the something. smell right before you get them to your <laughs> mouth. Is, ah. Hey, man of your word, I am back proud out of you, water now. Height. Scott Canterbury, Kristen Miller. They got one keeper in the boat. He may be too big. It's a big joker here, I think. All right. I told you there'd be one there, the though. Is he oh, too big? A little yes. bit goes a long way. Oh, my gosh. No, he's not. Kudos to you for piling in there. Yeah, he probably is. Uh, no, maybe not. Look, he's got a heart on. No, Just I thought the... it was a heart on his tail. All right, let's see. I'm, 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 I can. Uh, he might measure. Yes. Well, You're on spotlight. Go ahead. <laughs> Fish. What the hell? Yeah. Here, Thank give me you. that. You fish. Help catch another one. Oh my gosh. What? No, let me see. Here. He's 23 and a quarter. Huh? Is he? Oh gosh. He measured him right. <laughs> yeah, he's just laying there and he's 23 uh. and a quarter. Oh, heartbreaker there, 23 and a half of that. Man. All right, let's pull another one out of there. He was right oh in, my he was God. Right in the grass. Ooh. <laughs> it's funny watching y'all handle them. <laughs> That's a dang quarter it's, inch it, too it, long. It, it almost looks like there's a heart on his tail. He's a heartbreaker. He's a heartbreaker. <laughs> Just like mine. Golly. 
Yeah, we can. That's so close. Well, speaking of heartbreakers, now we got to clean up this mess. That's Schlopper. And Powell. There we go. Each of them have a keeper. Mine's, a, mine's a in the slot, I'm pretty sure. Each of them need a keeper. And this could be it. Yep, mine is for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. God, I wish you'd have caught that one. Now we gotta figure out how big's yours. That one looks too big. This one ain't too big. No. No, this is a good, perfect one here. It's a good one, I think. Throw them on the board quick. Go. The last one was just a bit over, just a touch over. This one looks like it's, uh, yeah, yeah. it's going to be right in the slot there. Not a huge he's one, money. but it's uh, what they need right now. Okay. Um, up. Let me think here for a second. Ben, you got a recirculator on this other one? I just want to, I'm going to double check that other one, because it's way bigger. Schlafen Powers. Trying to keep it pushing forward, going in the right direction, that is for sure. And right now, well over an hour's left of the fishing time this day, more like an hour and a half, two hours, right in that region. We'll be back with more momentarily. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Moving on into the afternoon session here, the final session for this three days of fishing. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Been spending a lot of time recently with this, this pair right here, one of our hybrid teams, Pat Schlopper of the Bassmaster Elite Series. Guide Ben Powers. Yep, yep. Keep them going. Oh, just keep hooked them. up again. They've both been hooking up pretty frequently don't, for the don't last course, 20 minutes. got time. Not a lot, but just take your time with them. It might be too big. I don't know if it's still light on. It is. Take your time. He's not pulling off. He is a good one. He's a good one. He's a good one. He's a good one. He's a good one. Come on, baby. Take your time. Take your time. I can't see him. I can't see him. Take your time. Just get him up and we'll. Okay. That might do it. That might do it, dude. That might do it. That might do it. I think that's going to do it. I'm close. Keep fishing just in case. Keep going. He's long. He's too long. I'm pretty sure. He looks just like that one I just let go. Come on, you turd. Redfish guys are gonna skin me alive. Yeah, he's gonna be too long. God, is he close though. Shoot. Yeah, he's half, half inch too long. Get another one. I mean, this is just pretty devastating, but that's the weird rules we have to play by in this game, I guess. Dang it. 
Hey, give me another look. Yep. Um, what do you want, the starry? Okay, you've only got about 10 minutes to fish, Ben. Here, here you go. Cooking ish day. Yep. Still hard at it. Two good ones. Trying Need to get this other bite one at a time. Water's falling hard. Trying to entice a bite. Trying to put it in the front of them. We know where they are whenever it's low, we know where they are whenever it's high. So we're like so in between right now that they're they're in between. They're like 70 yards of where they can be right now. So hopefully they're just starting to roam out here and he can put one in front of one. Or well two, but we'll start with one. Yeah, get get one and then once they get out here on the edge, you know they it's a little bit easier to cast, you know, you got you know where to cast and all that stuff, so. We're crossing our fingers. That's all we can do. Just keep fishing. I got it. I think the pickled Ooh. pig's feet's wiped my memory. I'm still, I'm trying to reset on who's winning the tournament, <laughs> who's on second, who's on third. How are you supposed to get your bait unhung when you get hung up? Like oh all yeah, kinds well, of... I, we can we can back that one up and show it to you again. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't right think there's any chance of us seeing a golden butterfly in this studio since that no, pickled pig feet smell is everywhere. I think that flushed them all out. I'll say, I'll say that's a little harsh. The equivalent to oysters in the pig world would probably be barbecue, not Exactly. <laughs> I think I got a short end of that foot. <laughs> if you were to say, oh, eat some out of date oysters. Now this, is it not true that Reeves needs one more keeper? Reeves this, does. I think he does. There it is. If this it's could not do it, too this could big. be a limit for Landon Reeves. It's going to be close. Be it might be, be too big. <clears throat> Folks, that might be a $75,000 fish. You never know. You better stay tuned. But that right there is a four and a quarter, four and a half. I told him, I said, give me the Scooby. <laughs> the Scooby snack. Berkeley go. Oh. Hand me the Where's the boat boat in the back. Let me get the boat going. They're about four and three quarters behind. So wow. if this is of mm -hmm. the I'm upper sorry. end of 22 <laughs> and seven eighths. You don't realize the pressure I was under. Oh, I knew. That's why I was trying to talk you through it. Felt like I, my wife was having talk, me. Talk, talking me off the ledge. Talking you off the ledge, trying I to keep it, you calm. I knew that was fish. Hope he ain't too big. He ain't too big. He's freaking money. He's freaking money. He's four and a half pounds. Here we go. Take the boat out of him. Let him relax. Oh, that's money, dude. Oh, wow, that's going to be so. That's, that's going to be over. That's Come on, a big don't tail, wait though. Time. Come on. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> ah. He said one thing correctly. That could be seventy-five thousand dollars. What's the rule? Half, half inch, right? Yeah. Yeah. God. Mm, mm, mm. You ever been a quarter inch within the, to a thousand, uh, seventy-five thousand mm. dollars? That's what it feels like. 
some tea time. Wow. I mean, I think not going to make it. Fishing. Not going to make it. So close. We've only seen about Here, three this, dozen reel that, in. that were that exact length this week. That's going to be a... Got him? Wow. That's what you call teamwork there. Get the net, Pat. Okay. Feels really good. No, that's a good one. As long as it's not too big. He's looking too big, but maybe not. No, he's looking good. He's looking good. Keep him coming. You got him. Just take your time and keep him coming. You got a five-aught hook on there. Ooh, he's going to be another burner. He's too long. He's close. Yep. He's close. He's. I'll grab the other rod. We don't have to retie that one though, because that thing's all barnacled up. That was a perfect yeah, net slot holder right there. Did you see that in the in the rod locker? Already. I did not. Right where he set the the net down, there's a little. Look out! Look out! Look out! Little ditch for it to sit in. Oh, it looks wow. exactly like it's made for a net. Looking for a little under 23 inches. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Another one a little too big. Yep. yep. God dang it. Is it over? Oh God, it's yeah, way over. Well over. 23 and a half or. He's almost 23 and three quarter. Action's picking up though. Everyone's ah, catching. Shit. Everyone's catching. Hot and heavy. Okay, <clears throat> we got about an hour and a half of fishing time until the end of the tournament. The weigh-in commences at 3.15 p.m. Eastern time. And what we're gonna do here on Bassmaster.com is we're gonna step aside momentarily. The coverage will continue on FS1. You can keep it here on Bassmaster.com if you like. No more pickled pig's feet. Just no more pig's feet. That's a promise. 20, two, FS1. 22 and a half See you on right FS1 there. momentarily. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. These are the heavy hitters of all of the redfish world. The number one teams, the number one anglers, you don't get here by mistake. You're here because you can fish. We rely on each other a lot. I mean, there's no doubt. Just whatever we do, keeping each other pumped up. I mean, just netting a fish is important as catching too. So it's, you know, it goes both ways. Let's go. In the boat, baby. Put the poles down, put the poles down. Put the poles down. Your turn. The thing is, you gotta stay positive all the way through the day. The playing fields, as level as it's ever going to be. They share the same passion as we do as bass fishermen. They bite the same, they eat the same way as a bass do, they eat the same lures. Whoever catches fish early, you're going to see them get pretty excited. Got, Redfish, it's, got, it's a different bite. Once you set that hook, it's just, <laughs> and you don't know if it's a 20 inch, because a 20 inch will bite just like a 30 inch. I mean, most of these things, whenever they bite it, I mean, they're biting it to, to eat it. Just a little too big for this one, unfortunately. Welcome to South Carolina. Welcome to the third year for the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Usually we're all about bass here on Bassmaster Live, but this special week we're focusing on another great, great sport fish. Great, great show going on right here for you. And this is the final day. This is Championship Sunday. The team of Myers and Chivas from the Florida's Gulf Coast are in the lead right now, but it is a slender lead. We have two teams with a four fish limit in the boat and a four fish limit is hard to come by here. It's a very challenging, plenty of redfish here, but we have a small slot, a six inch lim length limit 
that these fish are legal to, to, to take and put into the live well. And we've got two teams that have got that limit. As a matter of fact, the team of Land and Reeves, Jeremy Reeves, put his second fish. Each, each player gets two fish for a total of four. They have a lead now. They have a limit now. And the team of Myers and Shivas, Fred Myers, Cody Shivas, our leaders started the day with the lead, and they have been able to keep pace through the day, but they, their lead has been eaten into severely. That's the perfect fish you see right there, just a hair short of 23 inches, which is the maximum length that these fish can be. And they had a slow start on day one, catching a lot of fish, but hard to find those in between that 17 and 23 inch mark. But today things were falling right in that slot for them early this morning. And and actually built up a pretty big lead there in the first few hours this morning. Cody catching both of his fish, and then Fred got on the board a little bit later, and they filled out a good limit, but now we are seeing some people get a lot closer with still a good bit of fishing time to go and the best fishing time of the day, the way the tides have unfolded today. One big key for this team, Tommy, as well, is that Cody caught his two keepers so fast this morning. They didn't waste too much of their day with just one line in the water. Fred had to fish for just an hour or two by himself up there, get his limit, and now they both can get to culling. But like we say, just like on the Bassmaster Elite Series, it doesn't matter how quick you get your limit, if it takes you to your last five casts of the day, at the end of the day, if you have your limit, you have a chance to win, and we're seeing that with Landon Reeves coming on late strong at the end of the day. Well, it was said for days in advance of this tournament, if you, the limits are hard to get here, if you get the limit all three days, you're going to be uh, likely the winner. No team is going to be able to claim that, and everyone has had a day when they have not had a limit, so. And this is the team that's waiting on their limit to happen. Now, only two fish in the boat so far for third place. Dwayne Eshte and you. Drew Cook are no. leaders you. after day one. Oh. No, 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 I thought you was over there. No, I, th I thought here. you spooked something. I mean, you know, they can just pass closer if they want. In the mud. We say third place, Eshte and Cook. Third that place here, Powers and Schlopper. Powers, Ben Powers, the guide from, really the only local in this competition. Yes, you know, the guide from Charleston place. area, Pat Schlopper. Like this is when we were in here. Bassmaster we Elite Series angler from Wisconsin. Truly a team tournament. Both of these boats dealing with the fact that one angler has caught the two fish Five. that they can weigh in today, and the other angler needs to catch a fish to help fill their limit. Dude, we still got three. I mean, we got 12 pounds. Because those are all good fish. Ben Powers caught a fish just a few minutes ago, only about an eighth of an inch over the 23 inch maximum length. See that earlier, right there behind that. Yeah. This day and Cook have been able to make magic happen late in the day, the first and the second day. Certainly hoping they can do that again today. Eshte and Cook, one of our hybrid teams. There are four teams that feature a Redfish Pro. That's Dwayne Eshte on the left and Bassmaster Elite Series stand out. And that is certainly the way you describe Drew Cook there on the right. Won a big tournament, caught over 100 pounds of bass right here last year in the state of South Carolina at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Oh, 
Oh, we had a heartbreaker there. We had a 23 and a quarter inch fish. Uh, it was probably five and a half, four, five and a quarter, five and a half pounds. Turn him loose, next cast, hooked up on a nice 22 incher, probably almost four pounds. So we got four. That was the goal for today. It took us a little longer. And uh, it's, a lot, it's actually a lot shallower earlier than what we expected. These tides really throwing us for a loop, but we're gonna keep grinding it out till the last minute, and we'll see y'all way in three o'clock. We'll be watching every step of the way here, that is for sure. We're gonna take you right up to three o'clock with our coverage. We, I, we need, we need to- And those weights are unofficial. Quarters. Yes, so yeah, just absolutely. estimated weights. I feel like we gotta have- Some quarters. of these teams, we talk about maybe these redfish pros who are do this for a living for the most part, Keep fish together maybe all year. These both qualify Bank. through the Elite Bank. Redfish Bank. Tour as solo yeah. anglers. And yeah. now they're coming together yeah. instead of competitors, they are now Control teammates yeah. for a greater good. And that good is 75,000 yes, for the winning team this week. The best of the best of the Redfish game. Yes, sir. No, 20. I'm on again. Golly, that's a, that's really a good fish. Travis Lamb from Seguin, right. Texas. Fish this event two years ago in 2021. That's definitely an upgrade. It's a good one. I believe he was the day one leader of this that tournament. A quarter. And there's the golden butterfly said to be a good omen for bass fishing. We just learned that, of course. Yeah. But now we act like we're real smart. Yeah, like it's just a common thing. Everyone that's should know that skinny. golden butterfly. <laughs> Good luck skinny. for fishing. It's like Will Rogers said, a dummy is someone who doesn't know something you found out five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's probably 24 inches, it's two foot, but it's dropping quick. I mean, it's, it's dropping about an inch every 10 minutes right now, so. We got to be careful. We got a little nervous in here yesterday trying to get out. And... We don't want to get stuck in here for fish in the well, but we did just move this school in here. So see if we can, been a lot of traffic in here. See if we can maybe find them out in this dirtier water, get a bite out of them. Be a lot easier ride home, I think, with another four pounder in the well. Each of these four anglers has their two fish limit. They're just trying to upgrade now. And they can only upgrade among the fish they've already caught. They yes. can't upgrade their partner's fish. And I believe right now Cody has two on the left. Chivas has two over four pounds. Fred, his partner. Fred Myers has one over We're four and one about two and three quarters. So the they do tide, have some movable so weight there. Makes me think maybe a traffic thing, a little more pressure in here, maybe even this full moon, because this is, this is a school of fish, or a group of fish. Everything looks very similar to what we received here like yesterday with Adam and O'Connell. Right we were around a lot of fish about this time of day, about an hour yeah. after this yesterday. Actually. Yeah. He's on him. Oh, pop. Me off. Mm. God dang it. Oysters. Extremely shallow water with a lot of oysters around. You get your line to cut quite often, unfortunately. Not today. Adams and O'Connell are defending champs, really, with only one keeper in the boat at this point, this late hour. Need something to start happening pretty quickly here. With the team of Ben Human and Aaron Salazar, Texas Anglers, the Corpus Christi area. Yes, got him. Got him. He's nice. He's gonna keep. Oh, he's a nice one, bro. Oh, he might be too big. 
day. Ooh, another nice fish might be. <sighs> a little too nice, it's gonna be close. Gotta be under 23 inches, that's the slot limit. It's too long to be able to count as a legal fish in this event. Unfortunately, I have to just let him go. Great fishery, lots of good big redfish, but unfortunately, so many of them are just over the limit, over the slot limit. They make it frustrating for these teams, but uh, that's just something that you have got to deal with. But we are heading towards the end of this tournament, but more than an hour's worth of fishing time left. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by TH Marine and by Yamaha. About that, boys and girls. I made the joke of him, but you better catch your fish early because I'm not going to stand up here and drive for you all day when I'm waiting on you to catch one, I promise. No. Double up, baby. Let's go. Get in the boat. Get your little red behind. This is a, this, hey, this is a five pounder. This is a, this is a five pounder right here, baby. <laughs> no, but it does. It adds a different dyna dynamic. It's going to add some some TV twist to it. I think uh, it'll be some good watching to see who's going to be able to put them on the deck the fastest, so the other one can drive. Get the boat. Get the boat. Get the boat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a, that might be a diggum six pounder. Let's go. Let's go. In the boat, baby. Put the poles down. Put the poles down. Put the poles down. Your turn. Let's go. South Carolina redfish, baby. He's beautiful. Let's see what he, let's see what he measures. 22, 22 on the dot, or a little, just a little shy. I think the biggest thing that's going to have to go right is we're going to have to catch four fish a day, and I think that's going to be the biggest challenge. Let's put him in a well. That's four. We'll make it real interesting today. I'm sure our I'm sure our competitors are having a little bit better day yeah, today, like but that. it sure feels good to put four in the boat. Texas anglers Travis Land and Jeremy. Jeremy Reeves having a great time here. They're in second place, just a pound and a half behind the leaders. Look at that scene behind our mm. Yamaha rules of the game. Of course, we have 10 two-person teams fishing three full days. That hasn't changed from past years. Now what is changed? Four fish limit per day, two per angler. In the team, you have to catch your own two and a smaller slot limit of 17 to 23 inches. Heaviest three-day total wins. We're about to get to total time here before too long. Things are getting exciting and, and very tense for a lot of these anglers especially around the top of the leaderboard. What a great fishery, what a shot that is right there. And now let's get out to Landon Reeves. A team rolls up on something like that, Davey Height, and they can go from sixth or seventh to maybe the top spot real quick. We're Absolutely. getting over here to this point we were trying to get to when we left. That big water's coming right around here. It kind of emulates that little point we were on the, on the other side. We can't get to that anymore, the water's too low. So that water drops off pretty fast right here. We're hoping, see that, I need mm -hmm. to. There's a push right there in front of us. Right about where we expected these fish to be. Oh, hey, there we go. There's a couple of them, two or three of them. Right where they're supposed to be. Oh yeah, there's bud moles everywhere. Let's put the power pole down right there. Right where they're supposed to be, we're talking about it. Right tucked in behind these Windward points with that water coming around the edge. We caught two, we're out, we, this is where I caught one of mine and he lost one not too long ago. It's got a good shell on the bottom too. Yeah, it's just kind of scattered. But the main thing is that water coming across here and it being a little bit deeper shelf. It's kind of been a big 100 yard flat behind us. Can't really see them. These fish are real light colored. 
So you can't really just, it's not like fishing in real super, super clear water where those fish get real beet red and you can see them in three, four foot of water. It's not like that. These are, these fish live on sand and oysters, so they're real light colored. In Louisiana, in Texas, when it gets real, real grassy, they'll get beet, beet orange. Sometimes just as bright as you can, a bronze. When they get like that, it sure makes them easier to see in that clear water, but we don't have that luxury here. It's like fishing in a koi pond. Yep. So you just kind of got, if you see some mud bowls or you see a little push, you got to get over there and get in front of it, get your bait in front of it just to see. I'm telling how many mullet we've thrown at today. <laughs> I'm gonna let the wind just blow us. We had to get off of that flat. We can't go back to where we've been going. That same drift we've been making all day, that's the last time we're gonna be able to make it, so. We're gonna go around this corner, go about 100 yards, we don't catch anything. We're gonna work our way north to a couple of deeper banks, maybe where we started day one. We don't have too much time left. <clears throat> sure will be nice to get two more four pounders. I just, man, I wanted to at least repeat what we did today or do better. Just had a harder time keeping them on the hooks today. Sharp. Yeah. Well, a lot of you folks, you're used to watching bass fishing, and uh, I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with Falcon rods. Well, Falcon come out with a new Mars series specifically for red fishing, and that's what I've been throwing all week. Man, there's some great rods. What'd you catch your two fish on today? No, I caught I caught one on the marsh, and I caught Waterloo. one I caught <laughs> one on yours. That was bait color, no doubt. I don't know. That seemed to be the lucky rod. To a little me. bit of drama here is is that. Uh, Mr. Preparedness here only brought one pack of this specific color, so. Uh, Pacific or specific? Pacific. <laughs> anyway, it's a new gulp color. I think he told you all yesterday it's called Scooby, and uh, he was throwing a four inch, and for whatever reason, I was throwing a um, sugar and spice, kind of a, a white with some speck in it. That's what I caught on my fish all week, and today they just haven't wanted to eat it real well. I've missed, I must have missed four or five fish. I told him, I said, give me that. Give me that Scooby. Picked it up, first cast caught a 23 and a quarter, second cast caught a 22. Uh, and then what ended up happening is that fish got it too far down in his gullet, we had to cut the line, so we don't have any more of those baits. So. Speaking <clears> of that <throat> fish, why don't you check on him, make sure he's still alive. Well, well, you can't walk back there just yet. Let me get around this point. Too I'm shallow. dragging. Too shallow. Yeah, too shallow. Already. We dang sure gotta get our behinds around there by those crab traps. Soon, or y'all be seeing me and mom. See that? <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. I probably look better, mom, to wear than old Connell. Wind's picking up. Yeah. These are our leaders, Fred Myers, Cody. I'm talking about underwear they cut us off. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little dicey. <laughs> Not as bad as you. Show your ass in the mouth. I know. I get it honestly. <laughs> I don't think it's going to give those fish enough time to get, get down here, but it'd be worth a look, maybe. Kind of running out of time and options. Mullet jumping out here too, you know? This fish. What time do you think you're gonna leave to start heading back? We're gonna give it more time today. Yeah, it's 1.55, so. 2.15? Yeah, 2.15, give us 45 minutes, that's, that's you know, we're a little farther from where we've been leaving the last couple days. So we don't want to run the boat too hard and anything can happen on the way back. We'd like to be in front of somebody too, in case yeah. something happens and 
they can get us back too. So sometimes leaving a little early could be an advantage. I mean, I know we need to upgrade that fish, but if you don't make it back, none of it counts. Navigation has certainly been an issue, especially on day number one with falling water. Getting back is not a given. Their concern about uh, being able to get it on back there is, is uh, well placed for sure. And of course, they want to take every precaution. They haven't got this thing socked up yet, so they're going to try to upgrade as long as they can. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Tommy Sanders, Ronnie Moore here, as always on Bassmaster Live. And in the studio now, usually out in the field, great treat to have the, the legend himself, Davey High, two time progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year and classic champion as well. Great to have had you with you to comment on this all week long about your home state, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it, it's great being here with you guys and seeing the good fishing there in uh, South Carolina. About 100 miles of the coastline, these 10 anglers, 10 boats of anglers, 20 anglers total have been able to compete on. It's been very interesting to watch, and this thing is far from over the weights that we have. They're just estimated weights, so they don't count until they get them back to the scales. And getting back to the scales can be an issue sometimes, too, especially when you have the tide swings like we have here off the coast of South Carolina. About five or six feet here this week, each and every day. So a lot more to go before we see who the winner is. Someone's going to win $75,000 for a great three days of fishing. Tommy Davey, while we're in studio, I wanted to take a moment over at the screen of knowledge and, and give a little bit of thanks and kudos to the crew behind the scenes, to the viewers online, Fox Sports One, all year long. We kind of resemble baseball season. We start we start in February, around the time NASCAR and baseball starts, and we end in late October, early November. And we have covered a lot of ground this year, all over the country, from Florida all the way up to New York, uh, out into the Midwest and things like that. We appreciate you guys joining us for the 48 days we've had live Bassmaster coverage throughout the season. So many different platforms, so many different territories like we talked about, states, species of fish, levels of competition. It all equates to 336 hours that we've been in your uh, living rooms with you, showing you fishing action from across the country. And we've been able to cover some ground, like we said, throughout the different levels. Normally you see us on the Bassmaster Lead Series and the Bassmaster Classic on your TV for Fox and Fox Sports 1. But being able to show you the Redfish Cup Championship this week, a different format, different dynamic to conclude our live coverage for the year, this being the last day. We also have the Bassmaster Opens and our Strike King Bassmaster College Series. We got to show you some awesome moments where an amateur, a young college angler from the Youth Series, has a dream come true. We'll be able to fish in the Bassmaster Classic next year uh, through all of the adversity and the trails there. And then the Bassmaster Opens, the platform to get to the Elite Series. We got to walk you through those final stages. And for 2024, guys, we'll be able to walk you through even more so, taking you through all nine of the pipeline events that get you to the top level. So thank you for joining us for all of these days and hours throughout our fishing season, wherever we've been. And I know it's going to be a great final hour to our tournament today to determine our Redfish Cup champions. We kind of have all of our main series for the Elite Series all year with our individual winners. And at the end of the year, we always get to crown these different tournament series and who the best of the best was from all over the world. And that's what we're seeing right now this week. Well, just an hour total time before these anglers must check in in Georgetown, our headquarters, our fantastic hope, host city, Myers and Chivas of Florida, the team on top, but not much of a margin over land and reefs. There is more competition on the way. Tomorrow on Fox, the World Series shifts to Arizona for game three as Adonis Garcia and the Rangers take on Corbin Carroll and the D-backs. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. Oh, uh, getting down to the final tension, tensioned minutes here. The last hour of fishing in South Carolina, Winyah Bay, Georgetown, 100 mile long playing field here. 10 teams going at it all three days now and into the final hour. Myers and Chivas, Fred Myers, Cody Chivas, Florida Gulf Coast on top. Second day in a row, they have had a limit. Having a limit is a very, very hard thing to do here. The slot is very small. Plenty of fish. We've seen lots of fish catching, and we shall see more before this day is done. The team of Land and Reeves, Travis Land, Jeremy Reeves right behind them. They have their limit as well. It's set up for a bang up finish here. Definitely going to be an exciting weigh in, too. And when you look at the perception of it, Myers and Chivas, 
this morning had extended their lead to about 10 or 11 pounds. So you look at it now and you're like, uh-oh, everyone's charging, gaining ground. They had done their job so early this morning with a four fish limit. Everyone's kind of reeling them in, but they've still in perspective have extended their lead by a few ounces from what it was starting the day. So it looks like Land and Reeves have all the momentum and they haven't caught one in a while to upgrade, but they still have extended their lead with their almost 16 pound limit today. That's Chivas and Myers. Chivas on the left, Myers on the right, and right now they're just trying to upgrade. Each one has a chance to catch a larger fish than the two he has caught earlier and exchange that one for the bigger one. Grow that weight a little bit. There's a fish. Nope, it's a mullet. I'm sorry. It's swimming like a rat. Well, we got a little flat here. We're just giving it our last little. There's a puff right here. There's a fish. There's a fish swimming, swimming right. Oh, it's a ray. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good color. Right color, wrong species. Um, One thing about Fred, he'll see a lot of fish. A lot of times they are fish. But uh, he ain't I don't missing want to miss anything. Them. But um, we're going to play it conservative. We're going to go back um, a little early. We're a little further. We're not going to check our last place like we've been checking on the way the last two days. Um, there's bait and stuff pushing right here. And uh, the tide's about to bottom out. So these fish are going to be somewhere in the zone we're in. Sometimes, I mean, there's shrimp just skipping everywhere up here in front of us. We're in a good place. Um, ironically, the team that is right behind us or one place behind us is right across, and they're still fishing too. And to me, that's positive. Um, maybe they're um, struggling a little bit, I don't know. But uh, we're gonna leave here in just a minute and uh, just go lay our cards like we got them. This format is so interesting. It's truly a team tournament with each angler having to catch two of the fish, two of the four. And it's uh, gonna be very interesting between now and three o'clock. Uh, one of those two teams for sure can catch a fish that make all the difference in the world. Check in with one of our hybrid teams, Redfish Pro, Ryan Rickard, Elite Series Pro, Justin Atkins. Well, grindy is a good word. Um, I don't know, the tide's just staying higher longer every day, which is, I feel like we're constantly learning stuff that's not, you know, current information. Like, we get on a little bite, and then the next day, the water doesn't ever get back to that point to where we can capitalize on it. So we've just been fishing and learning every day, basically. And had a little creek that we saw some fish in the very first day of practice, so. Decided to end on it in here. I've managed to catch one. We've seen a few V around and one bust on the bank. So, I don't know. We got another 20 minutes or so. Maybe we can set the hook once or twice more. We really wish there was about two foot less water in here. But... Yeah. Rickard, part of the winning it's team the first year this experience. was contested. Much respect to the George Tinians, George Townians, whatever you want to say. This is a, uh, for me, it's definitely been a fishery that's kind of kicked my tail, really, every time. I mean, I've had a, I've had a decent finish here and been a long time ago, but it's just a really, really challenging fishery with the water movement. And then you add in the component of the practice days, tides were a complete opposite of the tournament day tides. It just makes it really challenging. It's definitely gotten the better of us. Back here, do I? 
see him out there? Yeah. Want to swing us? I don't want us to get stuck. Can you throw it that far? No. Third place, Dwayne Ashday and Drew Cook on the right there. They were our first day leaders. The only, only team on the first day to catch a limit. Oh God, that was perfect. It was headed there. Two fish shy of a limit as it stands right now. It's gotta be. That's an island though. Really just shows how every this day is, is so mm. important and you can't think that you're going to sit on a good first day lead because <laughs> after day <laughs> one it looked like they were in total control yeah. of this event and then yesterday probably the last 10 minutes of their fishing day that they've caught their one and only oh, keeper one fish. You said Dwayne, though, don't stand up much. He ain't sitting down right now, I'll tell you that. It is skinny right there, look at that. Mm -hmm. If you parked it on that, you would be done, son. I don't even want to get close to that, I'm getting, my knees are wobbling. We'll get Dwayne and them to pull us off. Yeah, there's definitely some people out there walking yeah, around. Wayne Ashtay fished this event last year. First year for Myers and Chivas. I mean, they're the What's team called? that won the, uh, the Redfish World Series Man, just a few weeks ago. Pole. For the trolling motor, we couldn't do what we do. We've stayed power pole down and caught 20 fish on that point. And uh, what about the trolling motor? Um, trolling motor is super quiet. It doesn't make a sound. You can see how close we can get to these fish. And um, I mean, we got to think lithium pros. Lithium pros is what powers this thing, and and um, they they helped us out so much. They actually shipped us a battery. And uh, um, um, bass assassin, we caught our fish on on bass assassin baits. We caught, I think, three of the fish we weighed in on elite shiner bass assassins. And um, I don't know. We're just ready to go see how this thing falls. It's a lot calmer today than it was yesterday. So um, I got the remote. I want to thank my wife and family back home that's watching. Without her, I could definitely not come do this. We got a one and a half year old at home, Austin. He's been watching the last couple days every time I weigh in. And the wife said every time uh, someone goes up on stage to weigh redfish, he says data. So he can't really pick me out yet on the screen, but um, everyone watching back in Florida, AFCO, love their stuff. First time using their leader. We had so many fish up in the grass, that stuff's awesome. Smith, Baystar Restaurant Group, all the guys that, you know, kind of support us throughout the year. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, but that's, that's everyone I could think of. But biggest to my wife for letting me come do this, because it's not hard wrestling a one and a half year old that doesn't want to sit still all day, so I appreciate that. All right, get your thanks in while you can remember today. You don't want to forget about it before your opportunity has passed there. There are leaders, Myers and Chivas, Eshte and Cook fishing on. We're going to take a quick break, step away, and be right back. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship at Winya Bay, South Carolina is sponsored by Power Pole and by Skeeter Boats. A little bit. It's a real good fish. 
We got one. As a Florida angler, in particular with redfish, I think you can transition to any fishery. Um, our fishing is very tough there for redfish. We have a tremendous amount of anglers that fish them. In Florida, we got a four hour window, two hour window where the tide will be right here. We're gonna have like maybe 40 minutes. Team of Myers and Chivas. We talked to all of our anglers before this tournament and of course these guys compete as, compete as individuals a lot through the year and they said look out for Fred Myers. <laughs> Turned out to be prophetic. Cody Chivas has more than held his side of the deal up too. Two strong, strong anglers. Go check in a couple of our Texas anglers right now. Salazar and Human. So the, uh, the main guy from Bass one time Bass, they used to keep fish, uh, not keep them, but um, they didn't do the live catch and release back yeah. then. Um, yeah, I think it's just as many as you can catch, it wasn't even like a yeah. limit. But yeah, so back then it wasn't, they didn't care about conservation, and then he went the, forget his name, Roy, um, no, the one that created Bass. Ray Scott. Ray Scott, I knew it was Roy, Ray. Ray Scott went up to Colorado to do a convention and he saw all these guys fly fishing and everybody high-fiving themselves when they released the fish. He's like, that is so weird. Um, so he integrated, he got some stuff from fly fishing and brought it into the bass world. A little interesting tidbit that I didn't know, but I you know, I do a lot of reading. Um, but yeah, fly fishing has had its... Um, Let's see the tattoo. Oh yeah. So wow. that's commitment, isn't it? Wow. You know, that's... I've been wanting this. I've been wanting to do the Bass Master Tour for the longest time, walk the stage. You know, so this again is a dream when come true. That? I got it about mm, two months ago. Yeah. yeah, about two months fresh? ago. Fresh? Yeah, 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 fresh. Well, I wasn't a bass master at that point. Never did a bass tournament. I'm a old bass master tournament. So, again, it was an honor, and it's an honor to be here. I'm just stoked to be here, and I will be back again. I think you're gonna drag just... this big bear with me, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> If you'd have told us that, Tommy, we'd have put five pounds on the scales My for you gosh, every day yeah, and a little bit of pad hey, weight hats there. off, Aaron Salazar. <laughs> Certainly would have he put did. some butterflies in his compartment. <laughs> <laughs> he did bury the lead, though. We've been on him three straight days, and now he drops it with an hour left in the tournament. Yeah, that's look at huge. This. Look at this. This is awesome. Ode to Bass and Ray Scott. That's awesome. Yeah. Need some late-day heroics like we've had the last two days. Yes. We just need... Dwayne Eshte needs to catch two more so this team can have a limit here as we watch our TH Marine Weather Watch and it has been uh, very, very much the same each and every day and we like it that way when the weather is like this, just absolutely perfect, almost zero wind. Now the humidity's even got more comfortable wow. now. Man, oh man, number one spot in the country. We've got some people freezing in the, in the Rockies and the, the high plains right now. 80 degrees and 55 percent humidity. That's that is light ooh. wind, four mile an hour. That's that's hanging out on the beach weather. Yeah, You're not far from it. He just wanted to accidentally run into it. Cross his paths. That. Yeah. Now I got it. Back in the same general area where we saw them catch fish the last two days, they need it in a big way today. They need, need two. Speaking of those two days, let's take you to day number one, the day they all remember the most fondly. Yeah, day number one, you see the uh, little different scenery there. You see a lot of you know, a, a hard bank, you know, you, not a long stretch of vegetation on a big flat. This is a little backwater pond that can only get into uh, when the tide is about half 
out and then you can't stay there until it gets all the way low because you'll get stuck in there. But this was money for for them the first day. They caught three of their four keepers in there and had a commanding lead. The only team to bring four slot fish into the scales on day one. Day two, much different. They went in that same area and had no luck. And this is late in the day. Drew Cook caught their oh, yeah. only oh, fish God, within a slot with only about five minutes to go yesterday. Today's kind of been a happy medium between those two, but they'd like for it to be more like the first day. And they've got time to make that happen. So. They'll need to catch a couple of big ones uh, or do a big upgrade on the part of Drew in order to get themselves right in the middle of the conversation there. But uh, certainly that could be done. Fish a lot of team tournaments in my life. Never fished one quite like this where you have to rely on one partner to catch half the fish. It's, yeah. it's gotta be uh, tough at this point, late in the tournament, needing two fish so badly and really only one person fishing, essentially. I don't like the format. It gives you, gives you the team concept and some personal responsibility yes. as well. Ryan Rickard, fishing with Justin Atkins. thinking this fish is going to measure here. Yeah, now he's getting light on me. Maybe, maybe not, no. Mm -mm. Oh, mighty. We were, that thing again. we were afraid they were all going to be too big in here. I know. Just to show you how fast it changes. What time we got? 222. What is it? 222. Dang it, bro. Just cannot catch a break. Oh, you made off. Threw it off. Another one of our hybrid teams, lead angler. And the Red Fish Pro, Justin Atkins, Ryan Rick. That's a good their best team, uh, best yes, day sir. as a team yes, as, on yes, day sir, number yes, two. Yeah, really expected to see more fish, or slot fish uh, by these two. Uh, seemed to mesh well together going into the tournament. I heard a couple of interviews with them, and I think they had a good practice, but you've heard them talk just about every time we've had audio with them about how different the tides have been and the fish have not been the same as they were the three practice days. Two fish for almost 10 pounds yesterday. <laughs> I like one or two. How much? About par for the course. Got one or two more minutes. I don't recall seeing Rickard and Atkins fishing with the popping popping corks any so far this way, and they seem to have spent most of their time in these creeks yeah. instead of those bigger flats and islands like we've seen a lot of the fish caught around. Whenever you got that good, we need to roll. 
And that'll give us a couple minutes to spare, but I don't know how rough it's gonna be in that bay or none of that. Yeah, I'm ready. Time for that duo, and it's about to expire. They'll have to get on the road, so to speak, head on back to check in. A lot of our teams are engaged in that as it stands right now. One good thing about that is the previous two days we've seen fish caught real close to check in within Absolutely. the last few minutes. Those last casts of the day for, for some have been productive. Myers and Chivas team from Florida on top there, the Texas team of Land and Reeves right behind them. That's the race as it stacks up right now. Looking for a big, big, important weigh-in coming up at 3.15 Eastern Time here in South Carolina. Got fishing to go before that, and we'll be right back. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. This is the Taj Mahal. This is a catch meow for any guy in the redfish world. You know, not only just to make it and be a part of it, uh, but to do well here. You know, this... These elite guys, I said this the last two years, you know, these guys, these guys are true pros. You know, we're not, we're not to these guys, they're, they're fishing for a living. You know, we don't, none of us do that for a living on our redfish side. Yes, we can, we can do well in a year and, but to, to be a part of something like this with the Bassmaster name behind it, as professionally as it's ran, to fish with professionals like this guy, uh, it is literally at the top of the top of where we would love to be. So yeah, it's, it's special. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hold that for a minute. Let me get the board out. Good job, brother. Kind of a neat deal, rounding up all the best of the best of the redfish world and pairing them up in some cases with an Elite Series anglers turned out to be very, very popular and uh, the sought after place to be in the redfish world to make it to this tournament to qualify. 100% and seeing the teamwork dynamic. A lot of these redfish guys may fish solo trails, but they also fish with a partner most of the time, netting, culling, measuring, all those different aspects of it, sharing the load with someone. These Elite Series pros, they have trained themselves out of the team aspect and have trained themselves to do every decision on their own. So you know when you're paired with them, they're gonna have everything they can account for taken care of. Now you're working as a team, you could be so much more prolific than you thought you could have been before. And they're doing well, just, I assume all of them just met on Monday. You know, they've only known for one sure. another for a little shy of a week yeah. and they, they seem to have meshed very well. Every, every team that we've had a chance to watch. Tony Villator, Gary Moreno. A lot of shrimp up here. This is a stretch where human and Salazar just right up there a caught a bit. fish or two, together. just a little ahead of where they are now. Late in the day, on day one and day two. Day one was a keeper in the slot yesterday. I think they had a couple, one over and one under. The shrimp jumping. No. Got lucky on that one.
seen a lot of fish caught on the uh, vibrating jigs, spinner baits, but I'd say the number one bait has been a gulp or some type of soft plastic <laughs> shrimp, wouldn't you, Ronnie? A little swim bait mixed up? Yeah, for ahead. sure. Go ahead, well, Especially we talked about the clarity. We made the longest run throughout the day since we've been here in South Carolina. And I don't know, something happened and uh, we're losing the lower unit. We've got a really bad knock gear, forward gear, something's messing up. So anyway, we decided to make the run back. We came all the way to the boundary bridge right here by the boat dock, by the weigh-in station to try to uh, try to pick up the last couple of fish or the last few fish that we need. We're, uh, we're not gonna give up till the very last minute. You know, it's not, uh, as my daughter said, it's, it's not about, how did she put it? There's a fish in there. Anyway, uh, we're not gonna give up till the very last minute. We're gonna fish here for about another 20 minutes, uh, 25 at the most, and then get back. We've got one in the well, so maybe we'll get lucky here in a minute. Mexican, er, uh, Cajun depth finder. I was going to say Mexican depth finder. <laughs> I can say it because I'm Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the way them racist sun guns are. <laughs> I call him a Mexican and I get my ass in trouble and he calls himself a Mexican and it's okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> that's the end of the day. Is that what it's? Is it's that the end of the day. Yeah, it's, it's the, the end, end of the day. It's just, and uh, I'm just glad I, that I don't think they've been wonder. Yeah, yeah. They haven't even been eating pickle pig feet. <laughs> Here's our team from Corpus Christi. Ben Human, Aaron Salazar. Um, Aaron, tell me uh, what's going on. Uh, we had some boat issues. Um, first thing right in the morning, we thought we had fixed it yesterday. We took the engine apart. Took the fuel line separator out. I'm mean, fuel fuel filter out. We drained the drained the gas, hoping that we got it all. The VST, the VST um, drained that as well. Um, cleaned out as much as we could possibly. Added some fuel additive, water sep water remover. That obviously did not help. First thing this morning, we tried to get out the gates with everybody, and we were going to make our long run to the Atlantic, but without a good engine, there was just no way that was going to happen. So we're going to have to call it short because won't make it back. Um, just a bunch of boat problems, so it's kind of hard to put it together when you can't run where you want to run because of the boat. But um, no, we definitely want to thank our sponsor, Ron Hoover, for getting us this boat. Um, just some things that happen. The engine's part of the part of the deal of fishing. You know, it's tough, but yeah, it's a tough day to have boat problems. But it, it is what it is. Well, unfortunately, early into the day. Hey, for the guys who were talking about boat pop problems at the end of a grueling week in an unfamiliar territory, glad at least Moreno and Viator are close. Same thing for Salazar and Human. You could be floating out there bobbing with uh, the Titanic somewhere in the Atlantic if you didn't, uh, didn't get back. Getting around has uh, been one of the big challenges here. It's a place that's hard to get familiar with. It takes a, a long time to learn every little trick here, but these guys uh, have done an admirable job, by and large, and our hats are off to them. We got a little bit more fishing left to go today, coming up. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Time is running out for fishing here at this Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Championship. And uh, we got a big close race at the top. The team of Myers and Chivas from Florida just a pound 
and an ounce ahead of land and reefs from Texas. These are unofficial weights. Could be much closer than that. But uh, right now, as we stand here, let's bring in our friend Davey Hyde. Davey, Davey Hyde is already here. We brought him in. Let's talk to Dave Mercer here, standing by at our way in there at Francis Marion Park. And Dave, a few parting thoughts as you get ready to take to the stage. What have you seen? What have we seen this week? Well, well, let's let's talk about the tournament in a second, Tommy. First of all, I got to commend Davey on being a great sport. But if you guys were impressed with the pig's feet, Ronnie, show them what we got next. I'm sorry, <laughs> I just had a kid with you. <laughs> uh, you were a sport. You were a sport. But guys, if you're really looking at this tournament, um, you know, you guys know I love my wife. I have a, a my beautiful wife, Sarah. I'm, I mean, I'm. I'm lucky to have such a beautiful wife. But back when I was dating, that's what this tournament reminds me of. I mean, you go out, you, you meet the, you meet her, and you think she gives you her number, and you think, wow, I met this beautiful woman. And then you go to call her the next day, and you find out she gave you a fake number. Basically, <laughs> that's what this tournament is. Um, the, you know, the anglers just keep hooking up. And then, you know, they think it's a difference maker, but that slot limit is so restricting. Um, it has been incredibly frustrating to watch, but wow, what a fishery. And we're going to have exactly what you guys know I always cheer for, a tight finish. And it is going to be, uh, I mean, literally, we say this and people think you're building drama, but this is one of those deals where it could come down to one cast at the end of the day. And uh, in the redfish world, this is as big as it gets. We got we have nervous people hanging around here. It's it's a full on tournament excitement. And 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 Davy Height, a Hall of Famer, a classic champion, a two time angler of the year, called the hogs in a beautiful way. So I I don't think it could get any better than this. <laughs> oh, Dave, just for you, just for you, I would have never eaten those pickled pig feet unless you had not challenged me. But but I have to ask you, Dave. So. This tournament, obviously a little different with four fish instead of two. The slot was smaller, but, you know, the last two events being over in Texas, this one has been very, very exciting, especially with each angler having to catch two fish. And we've seen at times anglers, you know, sitting back, just just waiting or running in front of the boat. Have you enjoyed this week and the new format that we've had this year? Yeah, I, I think that added an extra element to it i mean more fish is always better if you if you ask me you know what i mean like if, if, if you're gonna win with two i mean you make it a four or five fish limit it becomes harder to win the tournament but we made it a little evil and sadistic i mean tournaments are tough enough as it is but if you have every fish not even in a tournament you go fishing with your buddy every angler on earth knows exactly what this feels like when your buddy catches a couple of big ones and you're just staring at him i know you're on the same team i know he kind of wants me to catch him but that is a ridiculous pressure that these anglers have been under but it's i i found it very intriguing and fun to watch Dave, I want you to rate our four uh, Bassmaster Elite Series anglers. We drug them into the redfish world this week. And, of course, they had to, to sink or swim more or less. And uh, rate them on how well they did. I think they did really well. I mean, one of the things that I love about this event is whether it was back in Port Aransas where we've seen Chris Aldane catching them on big swim baits or it's here where you're seeing anglers catch them on chatter baits and stuff like that. And, it's amazing to me. I think sometimes we take the Elite Series pros for granted, if that makes sense. Like, you just think, oh, well, they're going to go fishing with this redfish person. They're going to put them on them. But I have listened to conversations. Pat Schlopper is a prime example. If you listen to them in the boat, Pat Schlopper is putting in just as much information as Ben Powers, his partner. And this is the first week that Pat Schlopper has ever fished for redfish. So to me, it is really amazing. And that's one of the coolest things about this tournament that – if you don't really dig into it like we do, you might miss it. But, man, it is just awesome to see two angling minds, two amazing minds that have spent thousands of days on the water throughout their life and how they figure it out. Like, there's things that are happening. The, the, you see Pat Slopper up there flipping. Yesterday he caught a bunch of fish that way. That is I mean, his partner never does that. I mean, he stays out. I mean, he's a guide. He uses a lot of live bait where the fish will come to you in different situations. So it is cool to see them crack the nut together and literally get inside their head as you hear them communicate on the boat at takeoff at the weigh-in. 
Great stuff. Absolutely agree with you. Thank you so much, Dave Mercer. We'll let you get ready to bring the thunder there way in time. We remind you that's coming up at 315 Eastern time. Right now we're watching Scott Canterbury, you do Krista you, Miller. At the, you do what you think's the best at the time, and we tried to, we actually tried to run some new water that we hadn't even found, but it's just so hard. You, when you're on a limited time, and we already had spent an hour or so here, so it is what it is. Seeing Scott Canterbury operate the trolling motor with that remote, it's, it's a little speaking of little you know, differences in these anglers and the, the boats that they use and the techniques that they use. Uh, all of our elite anglers use foot control trolling motors. That line of it looks good. Yeah. This team brought us the first keeper of the day get early out, this way morning. Out and I get way in. A lot of it's the wind blowing. Scott Canterbury, Kristen Miller, very near the check-in there. Way in coming up for Francis Marion Park there in Georgetown, historic Georgetown, South Carolina. Myers and Shiba still with the lead as it stands right now. Again, those weights are unofficial. It could be much, much closer than that. Team Travis Lamb and Jeremy Reeves He's still able to stop, maybe catch a fish or two that could make a difference. We've got more, a little bit more on the way. Live coverage of the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is presented by Skeeter Boats. Final casts of the day being sent out there within, uh, most likely within sight of the check-in because the check-in is at three o'clock Eastern time. We are almost there. We have had 10 teams out there working so hard. Teams composed of uh, professional redfish anglers only. So hybrid teams with Bassmaster Elite Series anglers paired with redfish anglers, professional redfish anglers, and that's the way it stands right there. Unofficially, according to Bass Track, Team Myers, uh, Fred Myers and Cody Chivas of Florida, Gulf Coast, Florida, on top right now with a, with a limit. Is Drew Cook gonna be the top elite finisher of the field and get third again? He got third last year <laughs> in Texas. He's gonna get the podium finish again in third. Let's take a look at Myers and Chivas. What a great week they have had, keeping themselves in the game all the way through it more than any other team. Yeah, really and truly, and you know, we are just watching, or, or I was just watching the first hour or two, the first day, getting used to these teams and kind of what they like to do. But it was obvious that they you know, work well together and, and they caught so many fish the first day, I was like, wow, they're gonna have their four fish limit. But very, very surprising on day one, they only brought two fish for the scales. And we talked about it off, you know, off camera that, these guys that are catching so many fish has got to be a you know a law of average has got to catch up and they start catching some keepers. Well, the last two days that's them. certainly what has happened and and they've done well uh, working together at times. One eating a bojangles biscuit and the other one fishing <laughs> and back and forth. But they've done a good job uh, and it, I think the big key to them leading and certainly oh, they don't yeah, win until the bad. fish go on the scales and it's too close to call, but the, the big key to their success is they've been able to catch fish from takeoff to weigh in. No matter what the tide was doing, they seemed to be able to catch a few fish throughout where you saw some other teams, man, we've got a 45 minute window that we really need to capitalize on. And that's so hard to do when that 45 minute chain window changes almost an hour each day, 50 few minutes. So the big key to their success, in my opinion, is them working well together and them being able to catch fish on high tides and low tides. Yes! We've had all our teams dealing with much higher tides than they are used to, except for with the exception of possibly one team. Uh, 
tides for six feet, five feet, sometimes as much as seven feet yep. in this area compared to what they're used to being a foot or two. And this team is the last team to qualify for this event. Ten teams are in this deal, and the last spot went to the winners of the Redfish World Series event. They knocked it out three weeks ago, so they have the least amount of preparedness for this event. They were looking forward, hoping to do it, but the odds were slim with how good of a field the Redfish World Series field was. They take the title, they get the last spot, which means they, hey, if you're in the tournament, you have a shot to win, and they have done that so far this week. And you mentioned, and they just found out they were coming here three weeks ago. So if you've known for three months that you were coming here, you could research online. There's so much information readily available to these anglers. But they've had very little time to prepare. It's very impressive what they've done here this week, whether they finish first or second or third. Only two fish and eight and a half pounds on day number one, which, uh, believe it or not, that was better than average on that day because it was a very, very tough day for all of our 10 teams except for one. Especially with a bunch of teams who had just as good a weight as them or, or maybe a little bit better, didn't make it back. So there's a lot of variables. You have to not only catch them, catch the right size fish, but then also game plan and make it back to the weigh-in. Good point though, Tommy, you're right. They were eight pounds back after day one. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's a big hole to dig yourself out of. Now you can take a look at how our teams are distributed, getting very close to Georgetown. Fantastic host city there. We had a 100 mile playing field to deal with and all the connected inshore intercoastal areas there. Just a beautiful place here in South Carolina. Certainly a different look for most all of these anglers, and they've spent much of their time adapting right through this day as well. Yeah, when you think about most of these anglers being accustomed to one to two feet of water level change throughout a day, and they come here and you know the tide changes every six hours, about five or six feet. Talk about Myers and Chivas, you know, and they're, they're, they, they had a, obviously a, a sound plan and they stuck with it. They did not vary. They didn't do a lot of running around. They went to where their business thought they thought their business was going to take place and they took care of it very, very efficiently. Yeah, it's very similar in bass fishing that when you go to a tidal river, a lot of times we're way up rivers, but you still have that tidal influence no matter whether you're close to the ocean itself or up river. There's two things you do. You either stay in one area and try to adjust to the water levels, figure out where those fish go at high tides and low tides, or you try to run the tide. And they chose to stay, caught most of their fish around one island, and the big key to their success has been they were able to catch fish high tide, in between, and also on low tide. Yeah, utilizing the pop and cork on that high tide, dirtier water, a little bit of rattle, a little bit of loudness, then when it gets clear, throwing those swim baits in the afternoon. It's been perfect. Well, it's been a fantastic weekend, and the weights may seem small by a bass fishing tournament standards, but they caught a lot of fish. It's just a very, very small slot here, so we got a big treat here seeing big redfish caught all the time. Weigh-in begins 3.15 Eastern time on Bassmaster.com, and we will see you next time on Bassmaster Live.